Apologies. Let's try it again. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the City Council Special Budget and Finance Meeting to order for no Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. Do I hear a motion for adoption of the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Councilmember Riddle. The ayes have it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Okay, so we're moving on to old business tonight. I apologize. Uh, we're uh, Vice Chair Kalsover and Administrator Hill and Director Vaughn and I are coming from uh, another meeting out that was outside and uh, in the rain. So <laughs> it's a little warm in here, actually, compared to what it was outside. Pardon me? Oh, with our, uh, with our first district legislative delegation. So gave them a tour of the city. Lots of fun. Welcome and like yes, welcome to <laughs> a tenth of an inch of rain in an hour. So it wouldn't be the Northwest without it, but it was it was really fun. And um, we we're very privileged to have uh, them representing to us. And we're really looking forward to uh, having additional conversations. It was uh, a very short uh, time together, but very productive one. So with that, we're going to move on to old business. Um, our continued discussions of the proposed 2023 and 2024 biennial budget, our deliberations and recommendations. So everyone tonight, we're going to take a look at a couple of things. Uh, one, we need to talk about the budget amendments and the provisos that you have all suggested, um, as well as in the mix there, there's some policy discussions that we're going to have to put into a what I would call a parking lot, uh, because we have not had a chance to have those policy discussions at this uh, as of yet, and we and um, certainly we could have a policy discussion. And if there was consideration from the council, we could make a an amendment sometime uh, early in the year or whenever the schedule would allow. The other item that we need to talk about is we need to have a discussion about the levers relative to new revenues. Uh, it's important for us to provide direction to the, the administration on what they should be preparing for the upcoming public hearing next week on November 10th um, uh, for the public and our consideration as well. And so that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Um, so with that, my hope is tonight we are scheduled, we have the opportunity to go till, well, as late as you folks want, however, my fervent hope is that we will be expeditious about this. Uh, the meeting is, is, is the noticed from six to nine. I, I certainly hope we won't have to use all of that. And if we, after 90 minutes, uh, I will call a brief recess for everybody to, you know, take a bio break and get some water and get their heads back together um, because then we can do our best thinking uh, for the final push on getting these things recommended to the administration. Any questions about that before we get rolling? Okay, great. Thank you. Council Member Riddle, I, I was remiss in not asking if you can hear us okay. Yes, I can hear you just fine. You know okay. I would speak up if I couldn't. <laughs> okay, yeah. Very good. Uh, that you would. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so a couple of things. Let's first of all talk about, um, uh, we're going to talk about budget amendments. And I just wanted to make a note, as you saw in the, the materials that were sent out to the group, that um, basically there are a series of different um, amendments that people would like to see. Some of these, there I have some um, basic understanding from the administration. If there are additional questions we need to ask, they're here to help us out. And again, there are going to be some some things in the lower part of the latter part of this discussion that we're going to have to move to a parking lot for further discussion on a policy making basis. So, with that, I would like to start with Councilmember Bodie's. Uh, uh, yeah, and um, staff retention bonuses uh, for those who have been been here for the, at least two years, half for those who have been here at least a year. Um, and a question I would have is thoughts about funding and. Yes, yeah, so uh, I was uh, I was viewing this as a proviso in case 
we do see revenues, uh, and I don't know exactly what the revenue trigger would be, but certainly there'd have to be additional council uh, deliberation on that. So I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about what the trigger would be. Uh, and I, I don't have a full sense of how much this would be, though it could be scaled depending on what we uh, what we think is um, reasonable and possible given in improving revenues. Um, my concept is is this that these are these are hard times right now and uh, providing retention bonuses uh, that maybe looking at this mid-year, mid-2023. So that would be a good timing from my point of view because um, the the COLA issues would be out of the way and we'd be dealing with, you know, people's people would know what their salaries were, right? Um, so a retention bonus uh, would be, could be either based on a percentage of salary or it could be based on a kind of, uh, a scaled amount, you know, because we do have some higher paid employees and some lower paid employees. So there's a way to do that. So it isn't just the same amount for everyone, but it's kind of a progressively tiered amount, but the bottom tier is a little bit adjusted for our lower salaried employees. Uh, I think this is a really good way to try to keep the talent we have because it is so disruptive for a city like ours that's so small to have to um, deal with turnover. So we have some extremely talented staff. We have extremely talented directors and managers. And uh, I want to try to keep everybody as much as we can. So uh, my, that's, that's the, the policy underlying it. But my, my concept would be, retention bonuses and I'd be glad to propose different mecha different proposals when the time came. I just was leaving it open ended for the proviso. But I was thinking about something like um, you know, May, uh, May time frame and depending on what our revenues have looked like for the first part of the of the calendar year. Uh, so I I like a retention bonus because it's a one time uh, it's a one-time deal. It doesn't raise the base of the pay that you then have to have, you know, a compounding effect mm -hmm. over the years. So, but yet it recognizes the, you know, the tough economic times that we're in. Thank you very much, Council Member Bodie. Um, Would you like me to address my other one first and, or, or discuss let's, let's this stay, one Let's first. stay here. My, okay. my, my, uh, I'd like to hear from um, uh, Administrator Hill just briefly, if he has any any thoughts on this. I, I my suggestion would be on this one. I, personally, uh, I I completely agree with you. So I'm wondering whether this is one whether we necessarily. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how the language would be worded, but we would move. Um, yeah, we could come up with some recommended recommended language that suggests that if there if we have certain additional revenues or certain kinds of conditions that we would draft it we would draft a policy to supply this kind of thing right. uh, you know to have this i also on the other side of it i also feel as putting on my hr hat which i've done many times in my career also feel kind of that the administration can also ask for that too from the other side so um yeah vice chair Cassover. uh thank you very much um deputy mayor uh, I would like to ask Mr. Hill whether there is anything in the contracts that we have with our employees that would um, be uh, a, a hurdle to, to actually implementing uh, something like this. Um, but I want to say to Councilmember Bodie, thank you very much for bringing this up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's a very attractive idea. And if we indeed had the ability to do it, I think it would be great to do. But, but Mr. Hill, are are there any contractual or legal issues at play here? I can't think anything off the top of my head in the CBA. A lot of times you just do that as an addendum, or um, I'm forgetting the the correct term for that, to the CBA um, that both parties sign. Pardon me. MOA Memorandum of Under. Yeah, MOU. Memor 
memorandum of understanding is how we would handle that. Um, and back to um, Council Member Bodie's point and um, um, the budget chair as well, is we are beginning a salary survey right now that we will be bringing forward to the council um, in the future, unfortunately due to constraints of HR, it wasn't done in time for this, but we can look at it at mid by. So that may inform us and put us in a position where, you know, we wanna make sure we stay competitive in the market. And so we'll be looking at that. Um, and as far as um, a proviso, I, I, I would stick to just looking at, you know, consider retention or, you know, something don't allude to what that retention might look like, but just to, you know, if you want to put in a proviso, um, not the mechanism itself um, to, you know, maybe mm -hmm. give hopes of what that may or may not be as you have that policy discussion later. That sounds, that sounds good to me in the sense that I wanted to keep it uh, pretty vague and open-ended at this stage. So whatever the terminology would be, if the words retention bonus also are not very good, um, bonus maybe <laughs> uh, uh, would be good. Um, you know, I, I was thinking that if we, a retention bonus means you're agreeing to stay for a while. And so I do think that we would want to put just some light strings on it that way, uh, because that's part of the underlying goal and policy. But in terms of the amount, the mechanism, how we do it, I think let's leave that. I agree with uh, City Administrator Hill. Let's leave it open-ended because those are all things that we can't really decide right now. I don't think it would be wise to. Okay. So. But I, I did want to add that one thing. I, I If we take the word retention out, I do want to make sure that it, the understanding is that it's for some form of continuity of staying with the city. It isn't just, you couldn't give your two weeks notice two weeks later, you know? <laughs> Tom, I can't hear you. Sorry, there you go. You. My apologies. Um, yes, so uh, in the issue of expediency, I'm just wondering if everybody's satisfied with where this is, where we are, and we can move on to the next item. <laughs> Thank you. Customer Bodhi, please continue. This is all, this is um, even more general, which is what is the, what climate um, action for the city um, would be good to put into a proviso? So would it be something like, um, uh, you know, acquiring another electric vehicle, um, acquiring? Do we have our own charger? I don't. I don't. I don't I think, think so. so. No. Acquiring a charger, some some action that's related to the climate action plan. And so again, I I was envisioning this proviso being quite general, uh, and open ended till we see what our um, climate action committee has. Um, has come up with, but it was, it was, is there something small and affordable? That's kind of the way I was looking at it. That is an action to implement the plan as opposed to, you know, studies or meetings or things like that. So my vision was vague. Colleagues, thoughts? Mr. Furatani. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, the uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Councilmember Bavodi, for thinking of this. I didn't even think of this, even though you know I'm the liaison. Um, yes, uh, we're working on the plan now, and I think it'd be great uh, to be able to implement some of the steps that the committee might recommend um, sooner rather than later. And uh, I think this might be a good way to at least. Um, signal to the city that we are serious about taking a larger action once we do these things. I know there's pots of money everywhere uh, for, for getting um, electrical charges, for instance, and things like that. And the question is basically just sifting through all of these different initiatives that are coming down from the federal and state levels. And uh, so I don't have anything to add to what particular thing might be, since I don't even know what the plan is going to be. But nevertheless, broadly speaking, I'm, I'm in, in favor of this proviso. 
This could also be a cost share for one of those kind of grants, as long as it was action oriented. That's my that's my uh, kind of focus on this one. Yes, thank you. Um, Councilman Furtani, I, I'm, I, I will admit that I have not been listening in to the Climate Action Committee, but I am very curious to know whether discussions of city um, um, business, you know, the, the, the work the city has to do to, to run itself, whether that co has come up in your discussions of potential actions for, for climate. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Councilmember Casover. And yes, the, that question has definitely come up. Uh, we've noted the switch over to especially off-road equipment like uh, blowers and uh, yeah, um, mowers that basically are now electric battery powered as opposed to gasoline powered. Thank you. Uh, Director Pergo, in the budget, there's uh, just a question real quickly for, on point. Uh, in the budget, we um, there's a couple of action items there that are sort of anticipating an outcome from the Climate Action Committee. Would you be able to remind the council of a couple of those items? Please, if you if you wouldn't mind. And then Councilmember Riddle, you'll be next. I'll turn this off. Yeah, the two things that we do have in the budget right now is for um, the, like you said, off-road equipment, like the mowers and blowers, um, as well as one EV vehicle uh, that would be uh, later on in, in 2023. Thank you. And colleagues, what I would say is, is that far enough or do we want to go further uh, in terms of the initial steps until we know what's coming from the, from the climate action? I do like really very much like the idea of the climate uh, early action kinds of things. Those kinds of actions are the kinds of things I was anticipating. So that's, that's helpful and, and consistent, but I don't want to rule out something else that might come up, you know, especially if it, if it can leverage a grant. Fair enough. Councilman Riddle, you've been patient. Thank you. Um, and I believe I asked uh, Director Perigo that the, the truck would in, sort of, he envisions having a charger at uh, Public Works and at City Hall to make it function properly. So I think we could start with that and then, and then expand. I also agree. I think the proviso could be something along the lines of, um, you know, taking action on items that could be completed by the end of the year or something like that, like that we can uh, hit those those quick items and make some, as, as Council Member Bodhi said, uh, make some, some real movement towards using that. I do hesitate to put specifics into it because we haven't seen the climate action plan, um, but I would say something above and beyond what's currently in the budget uh, that can be done uh, quickly, like, you know, within within a fiscal year or something like that. Yes, please. One other concept that came up in our past discussions that uh, slipped my mind till now that I was thinking about was the concept of putting um, solar panels um, on our public works shed uh, or whatever we're calling it, whatever the right word is. So that is something that mm -hmm. I thought was appealing and yet, you know, it might be a little beyond what we are, you know, thinking about right now. So just wanted to throw that into the mix. Thank you, uh, everyone. Um, I completely agree that, you know, we've, we've had some things earmarked for funds for like early action, safe streets, early actions, kind of other things. And so very similar to that. Um, I'm trying to figure the best methodology to move forward without burden, overburdening staff. Um, Council Member Buddy, would you be willing to um, draft, draft a couple of things? And yes. and and uh, and and then our time frame is fairly short. It would probably have to be. Um, we'll talk about time frame at, at towards the latter part. That's fine. I'd be glad to draft uh, two short provisions and um, share them with uh, you and uh, city the city administrator. And that way we can make sure it fits. And I didn't overlook something every once in a while I do overlook something that <laughs> we all do. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member. Bud. Okay, uh, let's move on here. Um, we have, uh, let's see. Well, I, I've got this under budget amendments. I don't know why I'm, we've got, I've got things a little bit mixed up here. So um, 
this would be under a proviso for these two particular items. And um, let me make sure I got this correct. I'm gonna don't usually type on TV, but I'm gonna do it now. Um, and then, okay. And then from the standpoint of amendments, um, just for the record, uh, um, there were not specific amendments from myself, Vice Chair Cassover, or um, Councilmember Fertani had an initial one, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So let's let's move on to. And did you have you had a? Well, I, I don't have. And you did not have one as well, okay? And then Councilmember Riddle, your list that was sent in, just so we're clear, since we haven't had a chance to talk about this, is because of uh, obviously because of the OPMA constraints. Um, the questions that you sent in and items are topical in terms of provisos and sort of policy making towards the future. Is that correct? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to um, talking about Councilmember Lebo has some fixed and capital asset um, amendments. Let's start with number one, and that is delete and remove the 35th construction from the list of projects. And um, my understanding from staff that's already been deleted from the six year forecast. Do you want to elaborate? Uh, actually, no, it's just that um, as an adoption of our biennium budget, we would need to make that change to the mayor's budget. Is that not correct? Because we're adopting a biennial budget and the six year forecast represents what's planned. And so they did recognize that that's not in it, but we, the only budget we have in front of us for the biennium is the, fact right. the mayor's budget. So we would need to make a change to the mayor's budget. Is that not correct? Let me ask the minister. So the, to the dollar amount that was included in the mayor's budget, that is correct. But there's been the direction given to the administration to do a study on a third option for that drainage. And so we would need to keep the 30, it would need to be a Northeast 35th Avenue design project or whatever we want. And I believe that um, project manager Sylvia will be bringing that to you at your next meeting on the 10th. And so we'll have a dollar amount known on what that would take so what that would take to accomplish so we could include that dollar amount in the budget you adopt rather than the million seventy five thousand so it'd just be for the study thank you Mr. hill um uh, let's see mr lebo and then um increase the safe streets early action investments by a hundred thousand for a new total of 200 source of the funds is the capital improvement fund at 50k each in expenditures 100k total to the sewer and service capital fund outside to fund outside project management support if not able to use in-house PM resources within the first six months. Uh, would you like to elaborate on that? I think we've, we've discussed it before. So I think, I think most of the team is on board with making sure these projects move forward apace if we don't have the staff. Well, the first one though is to, um, to actually increase the safe street streets investments by a hundred thousand dollars and so the reason for this is i think we have an opportunity and we should explore ways to improve um pedestrian and uh, mobility for bicyclists in the city my concern and i've expressed this before is that we are focused on uh, street overlays which are moving cars but not providing enough attention to uh, safely moving people and then the second one is really about just trying to make sure that we can do the uh, the studies so that if we don't have sufficient in-house staff to do it, that we are prepared because we have a budget available to hire outside support to do those studies. Fair enough. Um, yes, Councilmember Buddy. Yes, I have supported um, Councilmember Lebo's efforts to make sure that our safe streets includes walkways um, as well as part of our uh, program and the idea of efficiencies. Um, when we are doing street overlays to look at the walkway opportunities there in conjunction with that to, to uh, make a good use of our money and also not create problems for pedestrians. But I, I am very open to the, to the idea of kind of earmarking part of our uh, streets uh, budgeting for 
for walkways so that it, we send the signal to the community that we're serious about this uh, this general concept. I haven't looked at the numbers, so once again, I'm making a general comment. I, I apologize for that, for not uh, doing a little more homework, but um, the concept of actually um, showing funds earmarked for walkways as part of our uh, streets uh, programs is is something that um, I'd I'd actually be in support of. I don't know if the amount has to be a hundred thousand dollars from my point of view, but uh, that doesn't seem like that much. So I just want to speak in favor of the general concept, but with flexibility on how we do it and um, in the context of this budget to make it easiest and also whether uh, open to what other council members think about the earmark amount. Thank you, Councilor Buddy. Vice Chair Councilor, did you have a thought? Look like you're raising your hand. Okay, uh, Council Member Furton. And again, uh, thanks uh, Council Member Lebo for bringing this up. I'm, I'm broadly in agreement with you that we should be paying attention, not just to vehicles, but also to connectivity and walkability and bikeability. I'm just, uh, I'm not um, versed enough in the budget to understand if we move that 100,000 from the, um, what is it, the, uh, yes, the capital improvements. Um, uh, it, it, I'd like to hear the staff perspective of that. Is that a wise uh, fiscal move if, or fiscal move? I, I'm not sure. Thanks. A uh, quick side note, Mr. Hill, and I apologize, it's probably my brain is still frozen from being outside in, in the rain. The, I, I believe that the, the capital improvement fund, we had talked about potentially utilizing some of those funds for, um, again, like a, um, a, the safe street study that was necessary for the, uh, uh, under the NACTO guidelines, et cetera. Is that correct? Or was it, what, I can't remember the fund that we were talking about. Well, we had put, in the mayor's budget, there was a two hundred thousand that we we did not identify a project with. No. It just said, and so that could be a source of funding. Um, Director Vaughn's that's that's what I was thinking is that she's going. But she's also she, going to grab her microphone and and what she's she, thinking something. Maybe describe to us which fund we're talking about here, so we're all literally on the same page because I'm so trying, trying to find it here. Yeah, I am looking on page ninety six of the mayor's proposed budget in addition to um, the the list of written out. Um, and again, City Administrator Hill did just identify the street improvements of one-time funds that we didn't really identify exactly how those would be used and could be up for interpretation. Um, the safe streets early action investments typically have in the past have, and I might have to uh, ask Director Perigo to step in here, but they've typically been used in the past for transpo um, to help assist that conversation in, in the um, traffic calming um, discussion, in addition to having some of that actual work completed. So, um, I just want to make sure that if I'm reading this correctly, it's the safe streets, early action investments, and that um, council member Lebo is what you were referring to of that additional hundred thousand. Is that, is my understanding of that correct? I, think so. I would I would only offer to say that looking at it right now, I wrote it some time ago, so I don't recall. So what I was going to suggest, John, that I think we're actually I think we're all on the same page here. Yes. So what what I what we'd ask the administration to do is ensure that we have enough funds in the mix to make sure we can do studies and do some other things. Yes. And it's certainly OK for us to put a proviso in here to say that. This uh, street improvements, the one-time funds, the 200000 which is basically what they had said without specifically saying what they're for, we could make a specific proviso saying this is what this is, or identify that's what it's for, or we could go from there. Uh, Vice Chair Casper, please. Thank you. Just a clarifying question for um, Director Vaughan. So Director Vaughan, when you talked about the... Um, the early action investment, the Safe Streets Early Action Investments, did I hear you say that that is the fund from which 
any um, community requests for traffic calming get funded out of that particular piece of money. Yes, that is a correct statement. Okay. In addition, oh, okay, to our so, traffic engineer. In addition to our tra traffic engineer. That also pays for our traffic engineer, yeah. any any uh, consulting services we get from him. So, so would would it be fair to say that that hundred thousand dollars, in many ways, is spoken for at this point? Then that 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 it's not open for additional kind of requests that we might make as a council. Oh, here we go. Uh, if I recall, some small investments were, you know, capital investments, and I think those would be signs and things like that, and maybe uh, very small investments were made out of that fund. And so, you know, instead of lumping those together and having something get lost in the mix, you know, to Council Member Lebo's point, he wants, you know, money there for actual investments, not studies. Maybe I would tie it back to the fund that we gave you with the $200,000 and identify in your budget that you adopt what those funds are meant for, whether you do that through a proviso, you may do that through a proviso, but identify those funds instead of intermixing funds and having them get lost in that shuffle. Thank you very much. That that was really what I was trying to get at, that in fact, what Council Member Lebo is really asking for here is there. It's in the street improvements one-time funds. And that 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 we as a council can say, and we'd like those to be used for pedestrian bike improvement kinds of projects and leave that $100,000 in safe streets early, early action for the, the um, traffic calming and the traffic engineering costs that we expect to see in the coming biennium. Would that be, Council, council Member Lebo, does that, does that make sense to you? Does that work for you? So, so my intent was to actually increase the amount that we're spending, not just to uh, determine how we're spending it. So it was, in fact, to do an increase. And the source of funds was the um, no longer doing the 35th Street construction, which was at 1.1 million. Wow. Okay. And therefore, if you take out 1.1 million, 1 million seventy seventy five thousand dollars, you have an opportunity to spend that money elsewhere. And so I'm suggesting that we invest it into our safe streets. And I picked safe, safe streets because we have a safe street study. Now, whether it's in street improvements, one-time funds or safe streets, early action investments, I, I, no, I don't know because the uh, second part of my provisos is that we do the studies before we spend the money so that we can then allocate how and understand how we want to spend the monies related to our street overlay program and our investments that we are making for mobility and safe and street calming. That's, just, that's on the other half of the, uh, on the flip side of the page. Thank you, Councilor Lebo. Uh, could you turn up your microphone for a second? Uh, uh, Director Vaughn, oh. you had a so, point of yeah, application. I, I, I don't, I will just say that I don't like having, that I raise my hand and count, some council members can't quite see me. Um, <laughs> with that being noted, um, the capital, so the 35th Avenue construction is out of the capital improvement fund, which is different from the transportation capital fund. So those two things were being funded out of two different um, funds. So I just want to add some caution there. Thank you for the clarification. What, where what does I'm, that mean? Well, Mr. Lebo? The, the, the question is, is there a limitation or a restriction? I mean, we have multiple funds in, in the, uh, the budget. Um, and we have things that, for example, general funds, general revenue funds, support other funds such as capital improvement funds. And so how you move the money around, I would only ask the administration, can it be done in a way that still makes sense? That's a good question. What I'm looking at right now is that we have in effect between the $200,000 and the 100,000 in the um, 
Safe Streets Early Action Investments to uh, Vice Chair Kostover's question about whether those that 100,000 have been spoken for. Part of it's going to be for the consultant work that's just this ongoing on projects that are requested by the community, speed pumps, uh, traffic calming, various things that are requested there. Then the, the 200,000 uh, that, that we had talked about, the administration put into the mix for these additional programs that, you know, in terms of safe street studies and things like that. The question to all of you, and I recognize that you're looking for this additional 100,000, the question to all of you is that $300,000 in the mix for planning um, and, you know, the work of the traffic engineer and some other things, is that enough or do we need to add the additional 100,000? I have concerns personally about trying to draw money away from the 35th street until we know what's going, what the proposal is, because we're going to be getting that in short order. But there might, as to your point, Mr. Lebo, there may be other places to, to look for it. Councilmember Bo. I'm comfortable taking a hundred thousand for that. Um, and, you know, because I think that we will find something better. That was, that was, you know, we had a really good discussion on that. And I think we all uh, shared concerns about the direction we were going in and, and uh, uh, the, the costs uh, compared to the, you know, situation we were dealing with. So sure. I, I think, I think, uh, to take a hundred thousand is is okay. Um, so it does that that seems like in a reasonable ballpark. It doesn't seem to create a lot of risk for the thirty fifth Street project to me to take an amount of that sort. But others could differ. Uh, Mr. Lee, but just quickly, just remember that some of this is privilege, so we have to be very not going to certain discussions, Mr. Lee. So to give you an example of where you could spend $100,000. So as my understanding is in the repaving of Northeast 35th from 190th to 200 and something, mm -hmm. uh, that it did include um, as part of that program to, to install a concrete curb there, which would provide a safe way to walk separated from the traffic. But there's a gap between 187th and 190th which the distance would equate to about $125,000 worth of curb if you use the current unit price from the King County Overlay Program. That gap, though, is related to um, walking to Lake Forest Park Elementary School. And so we would have effectively have this gap that we could have an opportunity to, to fill in. Now, there's questions about when you do the overlay in that section, but it does represent as an example that we could now um, provide safe uh, paths for, for children walking to an elementary school along 35th that doesn't exist now. And in the current program, we actually install a curb and we end up with this three block gap. So investments like $100,000 do have real sure. value. Yes, Mr. Fertani. Yes, I appreciate your point, Councilmember Lebo, and I can think of uh, another way to spend it is basically a, a pedestrian crossing across Ballinger, across from the elementary school at the bus stop, for instance. Um, so I think those these are great ideas. I just wanted to confirm because I'm 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 hearing two slightly different things. Okay, yeah. So so, so to, to Director Vaughn's point. Um, is it, you know, you gave us a caution about moving the money, the 1.075 million from a particular fund because it comes from a particular source. But um, from what the deputy mayor was saying, um, we could pull the 100,000 from that and that's still okay. So I'm getting two slightly different versions of where that money's coming from. No, I was not su suggesting that we pull the 100,000 from that, specifically from that fund. No, there's existing right now, we have 200,000 200, for streets improvements, street improvements that are one-time funds. And that's what we requested the administration in the broad strokes to help us go through the speed limits and those various things that we're working on um, and we'd be working on it for a period of time. And then there's the additional 100,000 that is actually in the Safe Streets Early Action Fund, right? The question is whether where that other $100,000 would come from. I defer to to um, the experts on the, on, the, on the side of the room here about what the restrictions are on the funds and 
And Director Vaughn, could you elaborate a little bit more on your 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 caution about that the the two funds? And I I I think that um, yeah. So just basically meaning that in the capital, I'll I'll answer that question first. The capital improvement fund is a REIT one fund, and technically. Um, I'd have to go back and double check um, because there are some public works projects as long as they're in the CIP that could possibly so we would there might be some more technical work that would have to be completed prior to a change of allocation so we could put a pause on it <laughs> in order to change some of our update our current capital improvement plan um because it has to be in that in order to be funded out of it um but to, to kind of go to step two of the question i think internally what uh staff was saying here is that from the street improvements the one-time funds what internally we were saying is technically you could take the a hundred thousand of that um that money and and allocate it in this manner is what you can please correct me if I, I'm not. If I may, familiar. Director Vaughn, I understand what you're saying. I think we're talking about an increase of a total of a hundred, so a total of four hundred thousand between the three uh, right. the three different um, pots of money, if you will. Um, thank you for the clarification on REIT one. I, that is that is a very restricted use, um, and so it is important for us to find a source that is commensurate. I I, I personally do not believe. For hundred thousand dollars, it makes sense for us to update our CIP. I'd have to think about that hard and and long uh, whether it makes sense in that regard. Uh, Council member would like Mr. Hill to weigh in here too, please. I was just going to say, from a, a revenue standpoint, we had talked about the uh, traffic cameras, um, perhaps over the average amount that additional money would be uh, considered possibly one-time funds for traffic safety. Um, if we add cameras per the new um, RCWs where we can, would that would we just earmark those funds again for pedestrian safety, pedestrian, bicycle, multimodal safety? And then that could be a funding source, but we don't know what that would be yet. We don't know if we're taking those traffic cameras yet, but that could be the piece that maybe in the second half of the biennium can start funding those projects. Is that doable from a pot of money standpoint? Uh, because it's not realized revenue, uh, or I mean, I get my terminology incorrectly, we're not going to be able, we could certainly have a proviso that said if there's additional funds that come in above, above and beyond or something, then it's allocated specifically to this particular application. We've talked about that extensively and I think, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I think we're all in agreement on that, um, you know, that it really additional ca traffic cam revenue should be going towards safety, public safety in, in, in the aggregate, and we can make it more specific there. Mr. Lebo, you had a thought. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, I guess the question is, are, may we not use the capital improvement fund for street improvements or pedestrian improvements? I mean, that's what I'm suggesting is that the one point, the one million seventy five thousand dollars be reduced to fund uh, improvements to pedestrians and mobility. I, I believe it's restricted as long, we can use it, but I think it has to be included in the CIP under REIT 1. Is that correct, Director Bond? No, I can't. Um, no, that is, so the, the funds within that, the, the dollars within that fund, excuse me, um, have to be, it has to be out of um, their public works projects, but they have to be on your currently adopted CIP. So back to, I, I feel like I'm restating myself and I don't mean to repeat myself, but we would just have to update that document in order to reflect that the intention is to spend those, those funds um, as you as you adopt, you can you can choose how to how to spend them um, on capital projects, whether they're sidewalks or whatnot. That all can be completed. Just simply, what I'm stating right now is that it currently what is adopted in the currently adopted CIP um, would not support that. 
And so that's, that would be my caution is that we would have to revisit it. And, and but I am, I do want to put a caveat in there. It, it can be changed and it can be updated. It just will take some time. Uh, Vice Chair Casper. Thank you very much. And um, so let's, let's just be really clear here. So REIT1, the use of REIT1 and how we, how we determine the use of REIT1 is governed by state law. Is that correct? That is correct. It's governed by um, a, a set of rules because it's one-time funds. And so it's intended to have this a, an entity or a city, a local government um, have a plan and um, and support those so they can fund and support projects on that plan with those one-time dollars. Okay, that's good. And so the next step then, I mean, because I just I just want everybody to be, all, all of us need to be on the same page on this. The next step then is that we would have to revisit the CIP. We would have to agree as to how it is the CIP is structured. And then are there public hearings or anything like that required for a CIP or is that just a vote of the council? I, I might have to, we might have to circle back <laughs> with you on that because I, I, do you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that, I would guess that it probably does. And again, I will confirm this, um, but I would, if you're changing your CIP, I would imagine that you would have to go through a public hearing process with a list. Um, and our current CIP is from 2019 to 2024. And it is very possible and very usual for a city or an entity to update that. So it's not unheard of to have it revised. Thank you very much. And so if I could just conclude my my so so i think what we're what we're saying here is that there is a um set of procedures that have to be followed that cannot be completed within the time frame of this particular budget process that we're involved in right now so we what we will need to do is to put this into i don't know a parking lot or a proviso or something to revisit it next later so that we can go through the entire process of revising the cip having whatever hearings we need to have having whatever votes we need to have and then um um making those changes but those changes by move, we cannot at this time move money out of the 35th Avenue construction line, which is a capital improvement funded by REIT. We cannot do that as an action within this budget process that we're involved in right now. I was just going to state not funding it in the manner that has been presented here this evening. There would be, need to be some technical um follow up i guess i'm confused because isn't this our capital improvement budget that we are adopting for 23 24 which has in it elements that we've just put in such as street improvements or one-time funds i mean this aren't we adopting this as part of our budget and so are we not able to say instead of spending $200,000 on street improvements, one-time funds, we can spend $300,000. That wasn't decided in 2019. And there are others down here, such mm -hmm. as the sewer master plan and the surface water master plan, which are provisos based upon staff capacity, but the, the budget for them is part of this budget, not the 2019. But that's not read one. But are, are we saying that we can only uh use re one if we've we the, yeah, the scope of it you're 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 absolutely correct this but, the the narrow it is very very narrowly defined restricted fund and so the question i would have for 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 staff is since we have done the the, the cip it, it was you know adopted 2019, um, as Director Vaughn indicated, we do do, uh, cities do amendments and change things 
is it an onerous process? The question is, is it worth adopt, uh, uh, um, amending the CIP so that we can use $100,000 for this particular type? I don't know the answer to this. I'm, I'm being... It's not possible. I, I just want to raise it a, diff a different way. I, how do we um, best um, make that number 300,000? Um, and so what is the best way? And I understand that um, the 35th Street project is a good target, but because of the REIT issues, maybe it's more complex than we need it to be. And so I want to more phrase the question as, how do we add another hundred thousand dollars to um, to that budget item? And is there a mech? And we don't have to answer that tonight. I think we can pose that question to the city. But is there a way to do that that still keeps everything um, uh, in in balance? And I think uh, Council Member Riddle, you know, raised some uh, possibilities that were related related more to a proviso type approach. But I was thinking, well, if we want to make it firm um, and have it here as rather than a proviso if we have more funds um, how can we how can we do that so that's the pragmatic question I'm asking mr Hill I think had a point on um, on topic here we've brought this up in the past um, we have 1.8 million dollars in revenue exceeding you know our projections for this year that came the bulk of that was the traffic cameras we recommended just over 1.2 million of that be spent in the mayor's proposed budget plowing the other 500,000 ish into fund balance which would be in your ending fund balance at the end of the year if you want a quick 100,000 grab that's general fund dollars that's where it is okay. um, otherwise you can put it in a proviso and we will work on a method to fund that to bring back it doesn't have to wait until the mid buy it could be done much sooner than that, but okay. that's that's a quick place you could grab a hundred thousand dollars. Member Lebo, what do you think? I, I think that's fine. I'm still mystified, for example, why the 35th Street project wasn't funded at 1.1 million in 2019. So how does that number get into this budget? And how is it that we can't change the numbers? We can change the numbers. It's just a question of actually doing the project. My understanding is you can't actually do the project and, and, and send the funds unless it's part of your CIP. You can reduce the budget for that project. Let's back up here. Oh, sorry, Councilman Riddle, I but apologize. The question is, I, I'm not particularly, it, it doesn't bother me as where the money comes from in that regard. Although I, I don't want to fund a uh, the 35th Street project at $1,075,000 because when we approve the budget, I'm assuming then we give up our ability to, to affect how much is spent by the city administration. Fair enough. Fair. Let's, let, let's, I appreciate your, your, um, your teaching moment there, Councilman Rabodi, channeling my, my colleagues over here. Let, let's, let's take it back for a second and not get wrapped around the axle where the money. So, so as yeah. a separate matter, what budget figure should we, as a separate matter, what budget figure should we, do we, are, are we comfortable including in the budget for the 35th Street project? Because it does kind of convey in a public way that we're willing to spend that much, which, you know, maybe we're trying to not spend that much. So, so I just, I would phrase them as two separate questions um, and, and try to grapple with them that way. That, that's actually what I was going to propose. The first, well, actually there's three questions. The first one is, are we comfortable increasing uh, to a total of um, ostensibly $400,000, additional $100,000 into the mix between these two funds, regardless of the source? Colleagues, any? There's, it's 100,000 and 200,000, increasing it by 100,000 to a total of 400,000. Is that number, everyone everyone comfortable with that number? Yeah. Council Member Riddle, are you comfortable with that number? In general, okay. I, I think I'm okay with that. We're staying with generalities right now. I'm trying not to get wrapped around the axle here. And then, then the question is, where is it that is that additional hundred thousand dollars going to come from? I think to Mr. Hill's point, I think that we are that the administration is proposing some money back, plowing it back into into fund balances, which I applaud them for doing. However, 
uh, this council has made a commitment to these in, these additional investments in safety in our community, and I am comfortable with that uh, coming out of there. And then the next question is, which is separate from this, um, about it would be about 35th and the level of funding on that, and we can talk about that in a minute. So from my standpoint, I would recommend that we go ahead and, and ask the administration to take an additional $100,000 out of the, the general fund because it's it's fungible, it's less, uh, it, it's not restricted. And and then we can deal with the REIT question in other circumstances as, as necessary. Does that seem reasonable to everyone, including the maker of the? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lebo. Yes. Um, Mr. I would just like to make sure that when we um, have our public hearing, we talk about this commitment that we're making you know, because we've heard our citizens on the the right. issue of uh, uh, walkways and bicycle pathways. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Council Member Riddle. Just to be clear, we're talking about that would be construction funds, not planning or design or, um, you know, management funds. Those would be actual projects, that 100,000. Is that what we're saying? Okay. Essentially, but um, I think there's also a need for planning, and I would ask the administration if they have sufficient planning money to do so. That first hundred thousand, I think that's kind of what I heard. Okay. I think I think that's something we could work with the administration on, and I have confidence that we have flexibility enough there. Mr. Hill, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, it is. And and you remember, we're going to go through this whole PCI study on the roads and figure out where these can go. We'll have to look at this as we go along because there may be some design money that has to be done. And we're going to want to make sure that we're supporting that somewhere else um, other than funds that the council has identified for construction. So I'll have to have that discussion. Um, and I'll hold my other comments for later. I just want to say having the plan and having the funds is is a bigger thing than we're acknowledging that's like a, a really positive um uh direction for us i think um and for our public works director to uh to be working on so just don't want to uh you know make it seem like it's normal housekeeping it's 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 really i think important new direction right thank you any more thoughts colleagues we're gonna have to keep moving here we're gonna be no, no, you're you're fine. I, I appreciate the discussion. It's constructive, and some of this too. Um, rem, just a reminder that some of these things that get into deep policy considerations, we are going to have to parking lot them for conversation. Uh, I do have the, the 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 giant white sticky things with markers out there, and uh, I don't make me bring them out. Okay, that's all I got to say, Mr. Liebel. You're looking thoughtful. Um, I just wanted to come back to the first item, which was to delete the $1,075,000 from the Northeast 35th um, project. And so I guess I would ask the administration, what is a number that they would need to keep in that in order to do the third study option? And then the remainder of the money go back to the fund balance so that if they come forward with a project, then it could be used. Mr. Hill, and I understand that we're going to have a proposal here coming up next week yeah project manager sylvia will be bringing bringing the design so for that forward that, that dollar amount is approximately eighty three thousand dollars um so that is the number that we you know we'll tweak the description of what this project is we don't want us to say construction it would be a design project um eighty three thousand dollars or ex exactly whatever that is be the fund amount and then the dollars that were allocated out of the sources that director vaughn had would stay in those um, we hadn't gone through the process of adding this project to the cip yet which we would that would be a step we would need to do even with that project to expend those funds That's and so true. that hadn't taken place yet either so funds are going to stay where they are and the number we would recommend is the number that we get from andy but probably by tomorrow that'll go in your packet and we repl replace this million 75 with that number Thank you, Mr. Hill. And I think this sort of illustrates the point. I think we're all in agreement of where we want to go. It's just a question of how we get there. So um, let's see. Let's take a look here. So um, we're talking about the second part of this, 50K each in expenditures 
100K total to the sewer and surface capital fund to fund outside project management support if not able to use in-house PM resources within the first six months from the start of the biennium. That's actually um, funded. Uh, yeah, it's sort of proviso adjustment both. <laughs> it, it would be uh, funded from those source funds, such as surface water and um, sewer. Okay. Which have fund balances associated with them. And the issue of expediency, I would say I completely agree. Does anybody have any other thoughts on this? This is to the point of us having a conversation and making sure that these projects move forward at pace if we are not able to attract uh, the talent that we need to move them forward in-house. I'm getting a head nod from Councilmember Riddle. Yes. Okay, everyone, yes. good. Yes. Um, Administrator Hill, Director Vaughn, any concerns about that? We don't have any concerns. Thank we'll, you. We will increase it. The only technical that I'm gonna note here is it will be added to the actual operating fund, not the capital fund, because that's where we pay for all of that's out of. Um, so I just wanna make that's it's a technical because, but I just wanna state that, that that's where it will actually show up. Thank you, Director Vaughn. And this is how sausage is made, folks. <laughs> Uh, so, um, and then number three, uh, increase the parks budget by 100K by reducing by 100K from the general fund to the street fund and replacing general funding from the capital improvement fund for the street fund with the purpose of hiring outside landscape firm to thin out the overgrowth and, uh, and non-native plants, blackberries. And there's also, uh, what are those other nasty things that are horrible, um, in Blue Heron, Whispering Willow, and Horizon View Parks and Lion Creek Nature Preserve. Now, there's a couple of things I would say here. First of all, let's let's take it to the question of, does everyone agree that additional uh, resources need to be brought to bear to improve our parks? I, I have a nuanced answer because we're gonna be working on a new master plan for our parks. And um, I think sometimes when people think things are overgrown, it's because they're looking at the natural area parks. And I sometimes think they're overgrown too, right? But I don't know how much is, is preserving the natural area and lack of, of maintenance. So I, I don't object to allocating some additional funds to park maintenance, but I'd almost want to hear it coming from pu the public works department up to us, like what they feel they aren't being able to get to that they would like to see. So rather than us uh, dictating an amount, um, which seems pretty substantial to me. So I'm just I'm just being a little bit businesslike about this. Like, um, so what uh, perhaps Director Perigo can kind of address what he thinks would be most useful. Before we go there, I just want to make a couple of quick, um, give you a couple of quick data points. One, there may be a collective bargaining question of using, adding additional resources to parks without, uh, we've had this in the past where we've used volunteers for various right. projects. We do not want to step on the toes of our friends uh, with on staff. So I'll, I can leave it up to Mr. Hill or uh, legal to talk about later. And the, uh, the second question is from, um, and then I'll leave this one to Director Vaughn, and that is the question about the street light, street light revenue pass through uh, fund. And Mr. Hill, do you want to take the first part of the CBA, and then Director Vaughn's second part of the street light pass through, please? Sure. Um, so I, I think this would be best as a proviso or a parking lot, however you want to do it, because we do want to explore the CBA issues. We did this in the past. You'll remember that there was a parks enhancement frank came up with this they went out and did an evaluation came up with a dollar amount brought that to the council um, as a parks enhancement and then we were reporting to the council i think monthly or, or so um, at the end of the day as the public works crews looked at what needed to be done they assessed that they could complete the work um, rather than send it out and, and it, we would have to take a look and see where we are today it's obviously different a lot of stuff slipped during covid um, and so I, I think it would be good to go out and do a, a true assessment of what needs to be done and get a cost estimate and bring that back to the council um, and then also to look at our past practice um, well we, we used to have an outside landscaping company but we need to really go back and look at what were they performing for us 
because it may be different than what we're talking about now. Um, and so we've, we've got some issues we need to explore on this one, but we're happy to, to take a look at it. Another point that's really important to recognize, and Director Perigo may have been going to this, but the um, we no longer have access to King County Correctional Services that have been supporting us in the past for, for doing these kinds of sort of uh, bulky removals and, and, and not remediation, but just basic get it out of there, haul it away. And it's a great way for us to help some people that really need um, some additional support. But unfortunately, that program is not, is not available anymore, which is really too bad. We need to talk to Rod, Rod Dabowski about it because um, it was a great program for everybody and great program for the people that participated in it. Director Vaughn, could you talk about the pass-through question? Absolutely. So uh, the general fund transfer to the street fund, um, the, the amount of money that transfers is the exact amount that the city pays for street lights. So we, we put in a budgeted amount, but we only transfer the exact dollar amount in order to support the expenditure of street lights. Um, and this has come up a couple times um, in my time here. <laughs> um, and this was handled in a way by my predecessor. And so, um, but this is my solution is to directly do that transfer. Um, so the proposal of, uh, of where the money is coming from, um, I would, I would hesitate on because that is a direct pass through to the street fund. But um, I will defer back and say, that city administrator Hill just mentioned what we've done in the past um, on enhanced park enhancements. And I think it's for the rest is not really my discussion. Thank you, Director Vaughn. And again, this is another one where it's not necessarily where were the funds are coming from. In, in my mind, it's a question of the, 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 the I want to say policy, but what we're deciding upon as a group here that there's an additional need. Uh, Mr. Lebo, would you be amenable for, to having uh, a proviso that stipulated that the administration would come back to us in a period of time with a plan? This will also allow the Parks Board to come to 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 work with us of additional. What was the word you used? Enhancements, Mr. Hill. Enhancements and a dollar amount, and then we will um, we can consider a budget amendment. Some, sometime in, in the first quarter because we will probably do a budget amendment at that time. Would it be a parks maintenance enhancement or is there a, because you were looking at um, kind of keeping up the parks. Yeah. So should we say parks maintenance enhancement or something like that? Because we don't want to make it sound like we're going to build a fire pit. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> I support the idea of going out with a parks capital improvement uh, request. This is really about maintenance. And okay. it's about what I see as that we're not, it's not, there's two things going on in my mind. It's uh, we have overgrown parks um, and, and we have invasive species uh, that are <laughs> that are overtaking uh, plantings in these parks, and it's really about maintenance. and And it's not something that you're going to solve in one biennium. It's something that you need to solve in every biennium. And um, I'm as a city driving along Bothell Way. You can look at the care that's in Kenmore and Bothell, and even to a degree in uh, Seattle. Um, but when you come through Lake Forest Park, it's um, one could say it's very efficient with its dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lebo. Uh, so, colleagues, are we comfortable with having maybe Mr. Lebo, if you'd be willing to write a proviso that basically says to request the administration do an, an, a, an, a maintenance enhancement assessment? Does that seem reasonable, Mr. Hill? And that it, uh, at a date certain within a certain at the first budget um, amendment we will in advance of that we'll have a policy discussion about and maybe a recommendation where that funding comes from we'll have a policy discussion and decide whether to include that in a budget amendment and in, in the first round is that is that reasonable yes excellent thank you thank you all uh, everyone comfortable with that councilman riddle are you comfortable with that okay thumbs up
Just want to say we should bring back the goats. <laughs> I still have a goat day sign hanging in my garage, inside my garage. It's above my workbench. The, the goats are fun. Um, let's see. Okay, moving moving along here. So uh, number four, delete the 100K for the um, 522 over underpass study. Uh, Vice Chair Councilor, excuse me. It's not our money. It's a grant. And it is a grant that we went after because the council for five years has been talking about how we might best improve crossing uh, of the 522. And uh, we've invested a significant amount of time, money, and we have a policy and we need to carry it through. Colleagues, other thoughts? Uh, council member for a time. Thank you. Uh, so this is um, essentially a pass through. Thanks. Relibo. Um, there's a saying that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, and the second best time is to plant it now. Just because money is someone else's, it's still a taxpayer's money. And I think the outcome of this study is not going to be feasible. So I don't think that we should be spending the money, even if it was not money that was part of our budget. Councilmember Bodhi. Yes, I, you know, I have questions about how feasible either of them are. It seems they both have issues that are significant, but that's why I actually support moving ahead with this next stage and seeing what we have, because I would like to see um, some enhancement, safety enhancement there. It's just, uh, it seems like a tough one. So, um, so I, I understand council member Lebo, what you're saying. Um, I have questions myself, but I think proceeding with the work is the best way to, to finish up this assessment and then make, um, kind of a, a, a decision on direction forward. Thank you, council member, council member Riddle. Yeah. I mean, I think folks thought replacing the culvert under 522 for Lion Creek was challenging and possibly infeasible and 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 we did it and I think that's one thing this community and, and this administration and, and the council has been adamant that until we really know it doesn't work thus the study um, we have hope that we can improve this space that we can make it safer uh, for folks to connect to Burke Gilman and connect to the new park and um, I think we do need this study to understand what is the true impact financially feasibly to the water table, the whole nine yards. So I want to keep this in. It is something we've really worked hard to get the money from the Department of Commerce. So yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, my colleagues that this should stay in. Thank you, Council Member. And just my two cents worth, I completely agree that from the standpoint of the, the culvert project, I, you know, hindsight is 2020. Uh, I wish we had <laughs> been able to have this the study done and 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 said we would put a, another box in that was you know just uh, capable of, of taking people through um and unfortunately that that it actually that money that was coming in for that particular project had really it took four or five years to 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 pull those funding sources together for that project but it does show a certain amount of feasibility and i respect my colleagues concerned about the outcome uh but i also feel like we've gone this far and if if the the experts come back to us and say no it's not feasible then to council member Rodi's point we will have to pivot and we'll have to look at, at at additional grade level crossing considerations um maybe we should ask miss scurry to give us her thoughts too <laughs> <laughs> and, and just just quickly there was a couple a number of years ago when we first had conversations about this there was there we saw examples of doing an under an underpass that included a creek in the middle of it with bike lanes on either side. We've seen all sorts of things that were, you know, potentially very expensive. We don't know, but um, in case you didn't know, our our neighbor to to the northeast, Kenmore, uh, former Mayor Baker has wanted to do an overpass um, right there near the Jimmy John's um, site, and um, and let me just say that his vision is 
is is very artistic and and much larger than anything that we could do or would be able to ever do uh and i and i guess our our we're more modest relative to our our needs and but i applaud them for thinking about it because they have some really grand ideas that they have and i think it's important for us to think big on this one so um mr lebo i think we're not moving forward with this one um let's move over to number five approve the budget of the following so annual street lay over pro overlay program I'm gonna read this 400k um basically all four of these things but looking for uh, again, this is the, the safe streets early actions as a reiteration of the question of a, a different, well, early action investments. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this was my note here. Apologies. Uh, approve the, that, those items. And so um, I think that covers all of those items, unless I'm missing something on that last part. So, so the intent here is that... Um... I'm not proposing to change the numbers as right as as, a, as we've otherwise discussed, but rather that before we spend the money, that the administration comes back and shows us how they're going to spend the money by developing the master plans, which include things like the pavement condition um, study, but also to recognize that um, we need to consider what we already have in our policies, which is to develop safe mobility for our citizens. And my request here is that, great, let's have the administration show us how they're going to do the street overlay program and how it ties to our policies of improving pedestrian and bicycle safety in Lake Forest Park. So that we just don't think in, in terms of roads as moving of cars, but we consider as part of the criteria for where we're going to make those improvements on the roads, include the other aspects of making them really whole streets which are pedestrians, bicycles, cars, and other means of mobility. Show us what you're gonna do using these criteria to include these other um, elements before you propose to spend the money. Thank you. I think, I think this is another question. I think we're all on the same page as the administration, but I do not wanna put words in the administration's mouth. Mr. Hill, uh, I believe you had some thoughts on this one. I'm not sure what thoughts I have. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely we want to go out and do the PCI index and get a plan put together. I think that um, once we identify the roads, that then the exercise would be to take a look at are there opportunities like we did on 35th to add pedestrian amenities to that because you know, that's going to inform it. It's all got to be based on objective criteria. You you may have a road that's got to go first because of its asphalt condition that's going to be prioritized over one that you could also do pedestrian pathway. So that they've all got to be included in the mix. And I don't tonight have a uh, recommendation on how we would best accomplish that. Thank you, Mr. Hell. And um, I think for clarity, I think, um, again, all of us are committed to... Why don't, I, why don't you speak first, Councilmember Brittle, and I'll, I'll tie, it, tie off some loose ends. Okay, thank you. Um, personally, I this feels a little bit um, antagonistic to kind of hold these back until they, you know, I think council should just work on a policy for these items rather than what feels a little bit to me like holding them hostage. Um, I think that we can work well with the administration. I don't see why restricting this use until they have done something that we haven't actually got a policy for them to do. It just doesn't make as much sense to me. I think we make the policy and they will follow uh, because that's what they're, um, that's, they're really good at doing that. So um, I don't, I don't feel comfortable kind of with the way this is working for these specific items. Thank you, Councilman Riddle. I don't think, and, and um, John, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he, his intent is to hold this sort of hostage the expectations we prove them but there's going to have to be a plan associated down the down the line to your point i completely agree about the policy question and i believe that it is um regrettably we have not had this policy discussion to create the framework necessary and as mr hill indicated the objective criterion that we need to make sure that we have um the decisions can be made appropriately 
And I would just caution too, when it comes to things like streets, uh, uh, these programs, I would not feel comfortable as a policymaker sort of cherry picking out of like overlay programs, unless it was a situation where the, the administration said to us, you could do this, you could do X mile, uh, X point, whatever miles of road without pedestrian improvements, or you could do X miles with pedestrian and gave us a bit of a, a, a smorgasbord, if you will. John, am I speaking out of turn here? Councilmember Uh I think that we have given, without providing it in writing, policy guidance that we'd like to see the walkways um, uh, integrated and also kind of prioritized within the street overlay program, even if that means we might do one fewer overlay in a year or something like that, and we have to change the schedule because it's that important to have the walkway improvement. So I think we've we've all said that pretty collectively and verbally. So I don't object to the idea of making that a more formal policy if we, if we want to. Um, I also trust the administration to do that, but I really want to underscore that that's really serious. We want to, we, we, we call it the street overlay program. I think we have to change its name too. And, and to the, yeah, or safe street. Mobility yeah. Mo whatever we, I don't, I don't, I don't have the words right now, but, but I think I just want to underscore uh, the point that it's, and, and this plan I think is going to be a really positive step in the right direction because as I understood it, our overlay priorities were kind of set a long time ago uh, and and we had to dust off, we, we even needed to blow the dust off that plan. So I, I just want to say I agree with the concept, which is we really want to make sure that it's uh, a, a, a priority. Doesn't mean every single street overlay will have a walkway, but it is a priority. I wouldn't want to see a year go by where we didn't make a walkway improvement, for example, just as a way to check ourselves. So just speaking to that, I don't think we need to uh, uh, belabor it, but I, I do think that that is our collective intention. I would I would completely agree. Um, and the question is whether we need to do something more definitive, and at what point do we yes. really lay that out? I hope so. Councilmember Gold. Um, yes, I I agree that um, I think we should have a more formalized policy in terms of how we're prioritizing projects. Um, something that I've tended to notice is inertia is a very powerful force mm -hmm. and that and, and that there's definitely no malice intended, but some of the priorities have been inherited from a time possibly going back to before some of the most recent annexations. And so ensuring that our current policy takes into account the current status of the entire city. So I would be very much in favor of us visiting that as a policy board. Thank you. And, and that raises the question of equity. We've talked about this geographic consideration, too, because there are certain areas of the community that were annexed at a certain point, uh, you know, more than 20 years ago, but they have not received necessarily attention that there may be a perception or inadvertently or advertently that that they have not received the attention that, that they deserve. And, and we need to make sure that, that there's that component in that policy uh, mix as well. Mr. Lebo, what would you propose? I would propose that um, we already have policies to create safe, stri safe streets, safe passages, uh, with recognition for um, passages to to our elementary schools. As an example, I I come from a capital improvement world where we always have to have plans before we spend money. Um, in my experience, I not gone to a funding source and said, "Trust me, um, I will deliver what you want." I am concerned, though, if we think about these studies as being a reflection of the pavement condition study, that in itself is not a mobility master plan. That is a pavement condition plan. I am concerned about what we've done. Uh, for example, when we paved Northeast 40th uh, Street, we only replaced the curbs that were in place already, but we made no improvements for uh, safe passages for children going to Lake Forest Park Elementary School, which is just behind 40th. And so there have been practices where we have not adopted the opportunity to create safe passages, which are our policies to do so. And the selection of Northeast 35th, um, as, as developed, now has this gap 
uh, where we had an opportunity to create a safe passage between Lake Forest Park Elementary School and up 35th Street, but the selection was to pave the far end, not the near end. So I think it's important that we do think about how we achieve our goals for creating safe passages, not just think about how fast we can move cars on new pavement. Thanks, and uh, I agree with uh, Councilmember Levo's point exactly. Though I would uh, say on the 40th project, they did put down the uh, asphalt uh, curb on stretches that had not had uh, the uh, that any kind of protection at all, right? So, but to your point, I think it's sort of hit and miss that way because I take your point on 35th very well. So yes, having something a little bit more Yes, uh, Councilmember Gold Goldman was saying something more, um, um, you know, in words on paper would probably be a good idea. Silver. Yes, thank you very much. And actually, the, I think this discussion very clearly points out to us that we don't have clarity of policy around these yeah. topics. And while we have had discussions and we've even had, you know, a bond a, a bond issue that we attempted. That, that focused on these matters, we have not actually as a council written a clear policy that gives the kind of guidance to our administration and particularly to public works that I think um, we're up, that, that this discussion very much points toward. And I would be very much in favor of that. So um, I, I would like to propose um, that some of us spend some time actually developing a policy statement around this and present it uh, maybe in a committee of the whole so that we can have a, a debate and either um, pass it as a resolution or I'm not, not quite sure what the format would be. We'd probably have to get some guidance from our um, city uh, attorney around that. But I, I just think this entire discussion points toward the fact that we have not had clear direction for our uh, public works department. And I think we owe it to them to give them that. Um, and then once we have that clear direction, we will have much more understanding of the kind of budget implications that it has. And we will be able to make adjustments to the budget. We will be able to identify funding sources that maybe we're not uh, not not taking advantage of right now. And I'm particularly thinking of some of the um, Puget Sound, um, the PSRC uh, grants that we've mm -hmm. never really gone after. And the reason we've not been able to do it is because we actually have not had the policies and plans in place to, right. to, to um, make a successful proposal. So, so I am very much about um, taking our time to get this right and doing that uh, in the coming months. Okay, colleagues, again, this is one of those places uh, where I believe everybody believes, I'm gonna finish my thought, uh, believes in um, what we're, the, 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 the policy direction and that we would like to see. We haven't fleshed it out yet. So the question becomes, where are we relative to the budget? Uh, I, again, I'm, you know, we can figure out a way to make this reasonable so that there are some, I don't want to call it strings attached to this the approval of these different funds, um, these uh, expenditure, not expenditures, they're just allocating for these specific funds. Councilmember Riddle, and then I'll. Yeah, budget specific. Um... You know, we have felt like we have, and we've been told in the past that we have been underfunding our overlay program as far as how many miles of uh, roads we should be doing uh, to keep, you know, to keep up with the Joneses, if you will. Um, we've done a fantastic job with what we've had. I think, in effect, reducing the overall mileage of what we can do in a year uh, concerns me. So I would really want us to see this policy come with additional funding. Um, I don't want us to get further behind. Uh, we all know that uh, an overlay is much easier to do than a complete road replacement. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot faster, yada, yada. So I don't want us sliding um, down in the, the, the uh, pavement index due to this policy. So that's a concern, I think, as we move forward, I would keep uh, up. And I think the ADA ramp um, 
improvement, I, I feel like that's tied to some outside policy that we have to do. And the name kind of keeps it that way. I don't know if renaming it is useful in any way, because I think it is intended for that very specific use. But I would uh, maybe uh, ask uh, Director Perigo or, or uh, City Administrator Hill um, if that ADA ramp allocation is is flexible or fixed and, and just to flesh that out a little bit before we move away from this topic. Okay, uh, Mr. Hill, did you want to respond to that? And then Mr. Lebo had a thought. Yeah, I could respond really quickly. So um, to Council Member Riddle, uh, you know, Council Member Lebo did uh, identify at the beginning of this meeting some additional funding that would be an increase to safe streets. And we, we had that discussion. So I see that going in. Um, and Council Member Riddle's right. I mean, we've been dealing with very limited sources just to make sure that we maintain the roads. Um, and policy discussion, happy to, to be part of that, of, of how we do this. You know, I think it comes down to if all roads are equal at 70%, then what's your next tier of, you know, that geographic equity and the ability to add walkways to it? If all things are equal, then you you want to go after those where you can make more improvements for your dollar, um, especially if you're allocating in this budget additional dollars. So I think we can take a look at that. And honestly, I don't, and we've discussed this internally, if there's a proviso that says that, and we did this with the strategic opportunity fund, here's your dollars. We're allocating these dollars for, for street improvements, but we want the plan before they're spent. I don't have an issue with that because we have committed to doing that PCI index, bringing that back. And then once we have a true understanding of the condition of our roads, it may come down to being very easy to say, here are the additional criteria that the council wants to add, that we then use that to measure what that order of improvements happen to be. Mr. Hill, Mr. Lebo. I, I do appreciate the idea that uh, we, we do have a plan before we spend the money. And I'm mean, gonna tell you, that's, that's what my business is. We have to come up with plans before we spend the money. But I, I do want to say we are so focused on cars and overlays, and we're not talking about putting money into sidewalks other than someone else's money. That, that this all has to come with a new source of funds. And the answer to that is it doesn't have to come from a new source of funds. We just have to prioritize what's important to us. And what we've been prioritizing is that cars are more important than people. And that a PCI study says the pavement is more important than people and how we make them safe. We've all had the opportunity to walk around Lake Forest Park and talk to our citizens. There are lots of places that don't have sidewalks. There are lots of places where people do not feel safe. And so if you think about pavement and cars, you think about pedestrians and sidewalks in the sense that I see no one walking on the street, therefore I don't need a sidewalk. And the answer to that is no, they don't walk on the street because they don't feel safe. And so we will never build a sidewalk because we never see anybody walk on the street. There are so many places that don't have equitable, uh, safe ways to walk around this. And it's not that we should always focus on safe walkways are someone else's money. It is really about defining the priorities and spending the money that we have with us today, such as slowing speeds on roads, make them more pedestrian safe. Putting curbs in there, make them more pedestrian safe. Filling in ditches so you have gravel as a place to walk makes that a safer environment. I mean, there are places where people are walking in an area that only has about two feet with cars going by them at 40 miles an hour because there is no safe place to walk because there are ditches on both sides of that street. But they can walk on that because it's brand new pavement, because our study says that that's where we need to put a road, but we haven't put any consideration in for the people. And that's what I want to say as a council is we we want to prioritize people, not cars. Uh, like, whoops, vice for trust. Yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Lebo, I think I don't think anybody's disagreeing with you here. I think that's the point that I was trying to make that that's why we need to write a policy. However, 
What Council Member Riddle also discussed, which is that we've never had enough money to actually maintain our road surfaces at the level which is optimal is also true. So we have to identify ways of uh, doing both. We, have, we don't want to find ourselves in a situation of having to completely tear out roads and redo them because they've degenerated to such a level that they can no longer just be resurfaced. So we have to, uh, this is just good fiscal management. It's not, it's not anti-pedestrians, it's taking care of the city's long-term fiscal future as well as identifying ways that we can improve the pedestrian environment. And I couldn't agree with you more um, about the issue of perception being one of the main barriers to um, pedestrians using our roads and that you absolutely cannot use the number of pedestrians on a road as an indication of whether or not it needs a sidewalk. What you've got to do is look at other um, factors that have to do with how people perceive the safety of the road and whether they're willing to walk on it. So I, I couldn't agree with you more on that. But but we can't do one and not the other. We have to we have to take care of our long term fiscal obligation to not allow basic infrastructure of the city, which whether or not you know you like cars or you don't like cars there are cars and they're going to have to walk drive on streets and we cannot let the streets degenerate to the point where we have to spend tens if not hundreds of dollars uh, of multiples more to totally rebuild them than to resurface them so we got we got to find a way to do both that's more for tony I think, uh, uh, you know, we are all in broad agreement about this. The difficulty I'm having with it from a budgetary point of view is, all right, let's say I don't do the overlay on one mile of city street. What does that get me in terms of pedestrian safety? I don't know what that trade-off is. And so it's really hard to assign a dollar amount to how much budget should be in these funds, right? Because I don't know what I'm giving up and what I don't know what I'm getting. So I think that's my main issue with this discussion. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody. I mean, I think these are all great comments and I, I would, um, Mr. Lebo, from my perspective, I don't think anyone is in disagreement with you about, about the policy direction in terms of making our, our our roads safer. My feeling is that relative to exactly what Councilmember Fertani said, I do not, um, I believe that these investments that are in here right now uh, in the budget are, res are responsible and respectful. I think that what we need to do as policymakers is one, Really, as Council uh, Vice Chair Kassaber indicated, we need to sit down and have a, a very specific policy conversation and be prescriptive about what we're looking for with the administration. I do not, it's not, there's no lack of trust between us and the administration. It's not like they're saying, you know, trust us, we'll figure this out. I really think it's absolutely incumbent upon us to create that policy. The, the issue that we have before us right now is that we haven't created that policy yet. And for this discussion relative to the budget, my recommendation would be we approve what the administration has here with a commitment that uh, that we are going to uh, early on next year, we're going to begin as policymakers, consider drafting a policy that is prescriptive and reflects the values that we all see in this community, but for pedestrian and multimodal access to our streets. And a reminder that too, there's ability to make adjustments to the budget going forward. And, and so, as part of that discussion of policy policy making, I think we need to create the policy, and then we also need to consider very carefully a, um, the broader question of re additional revenue sources and where the funds are going to be coming from. As I sit here and listening to listening to you all, I in the back of my mind, I've been I I did not include a proviso in here, but I have one that I've bandied about for literally the entire time I've been on council, and that is that any revenues that come in in excess of estimation from traffic camera revenues goes directly to safe improvements for our, uh, um, I won't say streets, particularly for pedestrians, crossings, curbs, sidewalks, et cetera. Councilmember Bodhi. I want to put, um, to add to your summary, the fact that we are going, This the city staff has been hearing us. 
They are going to put together a plan. It will include pavement condition, but it also will include consideration of, of pedestrian um, safety improvements. And that will give us something to start with for um, looking, applying our, our policy discussion. And it is, it is a collaborative partnership that way. I think we don't know that we need more money um, and that we can't do a balance of these two, to be honest. Um, you know, our streets, to me, seem to be in pretty good shape. I don't want them to deteriorate, so they'd have to be, um, uh, uh, you know, completely redone. But, um, but I don't know that we don't actually have enough funds. Um, that that was a previous group of people with a previous street focused, street centric uh, approach. So I'm for one. I want to emphasize the plan. I'm looking forward to it. And I think the combination of the plan and the policy together um, will give us uh, what Council Member Lieber is looking for. Colleagues, I think Councilor Rivodi summed it up very well. I am comfortable moving forward with the proposal in the administration, and with a, we, I believe we have a, a tacit understanding and a commitment to respecting our policy wishes in this regard. And it's up to us to put together the policy package here in short order that is prescriptive. So there's no you know, vagaries here. Mr. Lebo, does that satisfy your? Um, I, I understand that. And I, I would just propose, and, and as I did here, which is that we review and approve the plan before they spend the money. And because, I mean, for example, to pave next year, the summertime, they need to put in their request uh, next year pretty quickly of which roads they want to pave. Uh, so that the county can develop the design and the specifications and put it out for bid. My concern is that we're going to end up with another road overlay that doesn't reflect our desires to make improvements for pedestrian safety. And that one way for us to do that is to say, show us your plan and then spend the money. I certainly respect your opinion, colleagues. Is there... Um... Are there others that feel the same way that Mr. Lebo regarding his approach? Mr. Um, do, just to, as a point of clarification, we have to approve that contract, right? Because it's in excess of $50,000. So we, we, we actually have to vote on that, right? That's correct. Okay, so that is a... We cannot, we cannot. Oh, we don't. Okay. No, that is an interlocal agreement okay. between the city and the county for those services. I wouldn't go as far as Council Member Lebo um, in the sense that uh, I think we did get improvements and um, and some pedestrian safety uh, improvements as part of this year's. Uh, it does sound like there is a gap. I hadn't really focused on that previously, but I I don't think that if I think we I think we have to. Um, look at the schedule pragmatically. And so uh, perhaps we can get an update on when we might have the plan uh, and and when we might be able to discuss that. And then how does that relate to the King County timeline? Uh, but we may, we may not be able to uh, completely do what council member Lebo is talking about. We may have to do some kind of triage approach to make sure that we have input into what's getting funded, but we may not have the whole final plan done. That's what I'm trying to say simply. So I'm 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 for a pragmatic approach, but with some, a similar objective. Mr. Kassler. Thank you. Yes, I uh, thank you very much, council member um, Bodie. I, I agree with that. And it it strikes me that one of the ways in the past that the council has interacted with the administration when it comes to these kinds of plans and projects that were going forward is simply to have a report from the director um, and have the opportunity to ask questions and make comments. And it has been my experience um, with every department in the city that when those kinds of reports came before us and of, of you know, forward looking plans um, and uh, council made comments or asked questions that 
the administration was very responsive, and I would expect that to continue. And um, I have, I believe that is the the right way for us to work with the administration. Um, I don't feel, as a council member, that I have the kind of expertise or background to second guess the um, administration on a number of technical and engineering kinds of um, questions and decisions. But I do think that I have the ability as a representative of the community to ask pointed questions and to receive answers and see if they make sense to me. And I, I think that's our role. I don't think our role is to be um, another layer of sort of administrative control. I think that our role is to be um, policy guidance and curious questioners of uh, the kinds of actions that the, that the administration is proposing. And so that's the role I'm comfortable playing. And so I, I, that's, that's what I hope we will continue to do. Thank you, Council Member. So what I'm hearing from my colleagues and, I, and um, both Vice Chair Cassover and Councilmember Bodie really uh, highlighted my thoughts as well. I mean, uh, we're thinking the same here. Um, I'm I'm comfortable with where we are. With a, 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 we continue to make a strong statement to the administration that we have a policy, uh, some policy decisions that we need to be um, uh, policies that we need to be formulating to give them better guidance. And I and I right now feel as though. Um, if we were here having this conversation, you know, and had been able to come up this with the policies, you know, a number of months in advance of the budget, uh, and very clearly, then it, I guess our conversation, the point, the point would be moved, but, uh, um, that's really where I am. So I, I guess I would ask the question of you all, are you comfortable with the administ administration's approach to this budget with an understanding amongst ourselves? I'm not saying the broad, broad budget relative to Mr. Lebo's questions um, and, and recommendations. Are you comfortable with the administration's approach uh, with the understanding that we will come back to this as policymakers and we will uh, and the administration will come to us with uh, with their plan for and the uh, uh, the study of the pavement conditions going forward? What's your what's your thought, Mr. Furtani? I'm in favor of that approach. I think it's pragmatic. I think it's uh, going to fit in our budget time frame. And I think to Mr. Lebo's point, um, one of the things that I'm hoping that uh, uh, Councilmember Casover's approach will yield is if there are gaps in a plan that we can ask these pointed questions. And um, you know, I'm hoping that if we point out, yeah, what happened to the 187th to 190th stretch on 35th, that they'd come back and have a good answer for us. So I'm willing to cut them that much slack. Oops, excuse me. Colleagues, other thoughts? Mr. Lebo. Uh, I, I just come back to, I, I agree with uh, Council Member Casover. We do need the policy and as a policy uh, board. That's our responsibility. I think we need to put those policies in place before we go out and pave streets. So I'm not in favor of, of going along the way we have been. That I think we need to pause and put those policies in place so that there is clear direction to the city administration about how to address uh, pavement um, restoration and mobility for our citizens. So I'm not in favor of this, this approach. I think we should pause and do the policy and give clear guidance before we spend the money. Thank you, Mr. Um, yeah, and I'll just echo, uh, we, we, do, we will be coming up with a policy. Um, Overall, I've been fairly comfortable that the administration is listening to us as we have these deliberations. And even if we don't have a formal vote or a formal policy, they're able to take the temperature of the room, so to speak. And then sense of, you know, what are they hearing from us? And so I'm confident that in the interim between now and when we do have a policy, they'll be making decisions with what they have heard us talking about, you know, keeping that in mind. So I, I am comfortable moving forward. Councilmember Riddle. Uh, no, I I am uh, in the, of the same mind as um, Vice Chair Cassover. Um, I think in an ideal world we'd have that policy. They'd have a perfect plan. We'd marry the two. In a reality, 
I think we need to turn a little together before we get both those in place. And I'm okay as long as the lines of communication are open as they have been. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lieber, I guess we're going to be moving on then. And with a commitment from the administration, of course, that we know they hear, hear us very loudly and um, that we've made our voices very loud about this. And, and, and I don't think there's any disagreement in, uh, between us. It's just a question of how we get there, right? So um, I think we can get there. Uh, I wanted to do a time check right now because we are at 10 minutes to eight. If anybody, does anybody want to take a brief recess for water, bio break, stand up, stretch your legs, or do you want to just power through? Okay, let's right. let's take a uh, let's take a ten minute break because I think we need to stretch. Uh, we're adjourned for our turn. Taking a recess. Thank you <laughs> for ten minutes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call the City Council Budget and Finance Special Meeting back to order, and we were on to uh, we've covered a lot of topics here. Um, Council Member Riddle, we had a, a number of provisos or uh, sensibly ideas that you had. Some of these, I think, are going to be policy dis policy uh, discussions we'll have to have down the, down the line. Um, number one, you had facilities rental revenue. Yeah, I noticed in the budget we do have some facilities rental revenue. It looked like for renting out um, the the council chambers, the uh, like forest room, and and I think there was a suggestion to add the uh, EOD room uh, as well. Um, and so I think for me it was just understanding more about those rentals. What what does the rental cover? Does it cover all of our staff costs? Is there revenue that's you know in addition to that? And then start thinking about additional facility rentals locations like the uh, picnic shelter at Animal Acres during you know peak summer hours if. Uh, someone wants to have a birthday party there that they can make sure that they have it reserved for that. And then eventually a uh, possibility of a similar situation at the lakefront park. Uh, so I think it's two twofold. One, does our facilities rental cover all of our costs? And two, would the council be interested in an in additional facilities rental opportunities like Animal Acres Shelter? Um, I, I think this might be a uh, a an item for us to consider uh, at a at a future meeting. I'm trying mm -hmm. to trying to um, map it to the budget right now. Uh, Councilmember Brittle, this is sort of a policy discussion with some questions of of staff. Um, Mr. Hill, did you have any thoughts on this topic? And just really quickly update you. Usually, the facilities rentals are other governmental agencies or nonprofits like the Stewardship Foundation. We do not charge them. We have always waived those. Um, is council chambers is fifty dollars um and is that an hour or was that one time i'm trying to remember sorry you're catching me off guard on this okay. um, plus, plus a fifty dollar fee it, it's just a matter of somebody swinging by making sure that it's unlocked that they're in and then stopping by and making sure it's locked up sometimes that's pd sometimes that's the on call so i think we're pretty good as far as covering staff costs there's not a lot to that um but on, <laughs> um, but but the but but to the point of like the the shelter, um, you know that's an amenity to the park. I'm not sure I I would feel comfortable charging to rent that. We do take reservations to you know to make sure you know we had yoga in the park. We've had some some other things going on. I think we had a gentleman at one point doing some exercise and weight loss there. Um, we haven't really gone into that, but I think that would be a good policy discussion because sometimes we've looked at it as well. You might be running a business here. So we've had that discussion as well. Um, Thank you, Mr. Hill. Uh, <laughs> Councilman Riddle, it, uh, this will be an evolving kind of, you know, question as new facilities come online potentially uh, in the future. And I was mm -hmm. thinking that we should probably have a policy discussion about this sometime uh, additionally in the new new year. Um, did you have a thought? Uh, Please. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Couldn't remember which button. Um, yes, I, I would like to explore this in a policy discussion in the future, and particularly when it comes to the Lakefront Park. Um, depending on what we do with the buildings there, there may be 
um, really significant opportunities to rent out the house for retreats and, um, you know, other other meetings like that. So that's definitely something I think we'll have to talk about once the planning for the park really get, really gets going. Thank you. Uh, the next one, it, uh, my understanding is that reinstating the art fund policy is going to be after the beginning of the year that's scheduled. So, yes. okay. Did that, you have that has been confirmed, yes. Okay. Uh, the next one you had was added traffic, camera, added camera traffic equals added um, LFPD, LFPD, <laughs> it's hard to say, FTE. Woo, a it's lot great. of letters there. What, what they really was, abbreviated that con that thought. Um, we did talk about, you know, if we do take advantage of the additional two at large uh, traffic cameras or the um, the park uh, or school walk traffic cameras, um, that those do come with an additional uh, responsibility for the PD to to review those. Um, that cost is kind of included in the camera revenue because that we we can recoup that cost, but it is. Uh, something that would affect the PD and, and having to possibly bring in another person or have somebody spending more time doing that. So I think it's it's maybe it's more of a, pol again, more of a policy question, but as okay. we think about those cameras, I don't want to forget that other side, which is how does it impact staffing? How does it impact um, procedures within our PD to make sure that we're still getting the same level of service um, to our community uh, while they're reviewing all those? Hopefully, okay. very few tra traffic tickets. Yeah, I mean, very. It's a. This is a very important discussion to to ensure that in the future, if there are additional installations of cameras, that we are recognizing the burden that it places on our PD and the courts, and uh, we have the we do have the right to recoup those those expenditures uh, out of the out of those revenues to make sure they're taken care of before they go any further. So that's definitely a conversation as as we if and when we. Uh, add any additional kinds of uh, installations. Uh, number four, levy lid lift. This one definitively would be a policy conversation. For sure. Uh, you know, we haven't had any conversations about specifically about going back uh, or doing something. We've just talked about uh, we want to keep everything on the table that is, we need additional, figure out additional revenue sources to do the things mm -hmm. that the community is looking for. So that is definitely something that we will, I wouldn't say levy lid lift specifically, but it's additional revenue uh, source discussions for the future. Um, and I think it's pretty evident today as we keep trying to figure out how do we find all these things that we've just been talking about. And it's been already a challenge just with the limited things we've been speaking about tonight. Uh, so yes, I would like yeah. us to pursue a conversation about additional revenue. Great. Um, their next one is pedestrian shoulder cleaning slash safety needs sweeper sweeper arm. Uh, that that's a that's a, a great a great question about whether there's additional resources that need to be put in place to make sure that our paths are clean or whatever else. Uh, Mr. Perigo, I'm assuming that you have the equipment that's necessary to keep our pedestrian walkways safe and happy, and particularly with the upgrades we're getting beginning with the with the battery powered units. Just, just for briefly, please. Thank you. Uh, to this point, we've been, I think, doing okay. Um, I think as we add more extruded curbs in those uh, pathways, it does become more difficult for us to maintain those. So we would rely maybe perhaps on the residents to to, to do to some help with that. Or um, again, if we do need a piece of equipment, that would be a six-figure purchase, more than likely. Okay. Okay. Um, thank and you. I think Go ahead. I would say also if there's a, a contract service that we could rely on as we grow into uh, having more of those extruded curbs that are, are harder to maintain and keep clear of debris uh, and can be unsafe travel for, for bicyclists. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Director Perigo. Um, and that's definitely something that will, overall safety in, in our facilities is important when it comes to all our facilities, but multimodal particularly, make sure that mm -hmm. uh, there's not debris. I there, There's a lot of debris that's being moved around right now. I can tell you that out there. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I have some of it still on my clothes from walking around today. Uh, the last one was e-bikes, uh, need plan pedestrian community policing friendly police policies. I think this is another one too, um, that we're not 
I think we're going to have to have a, 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 a policy conversation about that. We don't have a specific plan from the PD regarding this. Uh, Councilman Rural, did you have other thoughts? Yeah, I think topic? for me, it was um, just uh, thinking of it more of a, a mid biennium proviso that if if there is still an interest from the PD as they've uh, requested those e-bikes that aren't in the current budget, if they would like to come back with those, that if it comes back with an appropriate plan of usage and, and kind of, um, you know, uh, storage and charging and all the bits that go around with it, uh, but it, but mostly just how will they be using them to interact with our community? Are they going to be strictly for Brooke Gilman? Are they going to be using them just to get out to the community in general? Um, I personally think, uh, you know, a police officer on a bike is more approachable from a pedestrian standpoint than in a vehicle. Um, so it kind of does seem to lend more to a community policing uh, policies that, that the PD have. But if they are still interested and want to come back with those policies, I would support that. Um, and if the council's willing uh, to put it into a proviso, then I think it would be a, just a smoother transition or we could just address it ad hoc during a budget adjustment uh, mid-biennium. Uh, Councilor Bodhi. I, I would agree with that being a proviso. That makes sense to me. Colleagues, thoughts on this being a proviso? Um, Vice Chair Kask. Yes, thank you. I, I also would uh, like to see this as, as a proviso. I, I have to admit, Councilmember Riddle, when I first read this, I thought you were talking about a, that we need a plan and policy for the increasing number of e-bikes on our streets. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good um, one too. And, and I think it is something that we have to talk about a little bit because e-bikes are really very different than bicycles and, and they, they travel at different speeds. They um, have different safety issues for, for other pedestrians and other bicyclists as well as for the people who are riding them. So, um, uh, so let's, let's talk about it, all of it uh, in the future. I really look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, Council Member Goldman, Council Member Lebo, thoughts about this one? Yes. Uh, just from my standpoint, I mean, uh, Councilman Riddle and I had a conversation or, uh, a number of months ago about this, and I said I would be fully supportive of e-bikes if there was a plan involved, and so I'm, I'm fully supportive. I, I believe that it could very well be a very useful um, tool or tools for community policing and engagement and safety, and let's uh, let's put it in a proviso. Councilman Riddle, would you be willing to draft something to that effect? And, and uh, um, any one of us can help you, or we can ask uh, staff to uh, help as well. Yeah, I could I could lead that effort with with staff and okay. Um, the council. I had one item that I thought um, perhaps uh, Chair French that you would have um, included. Do you mind if I bring it up now, although it's not on your list? I uh, um, without knowing what it is, I'm I, I'm not sure I can <laughs> mind or not mind, but go right ahead. <laughs> um, it was it was sort of the the idea of the healthy streets, the um, pedestrian uh, priority streets, and and utilizing those to create um, less car centric zones within our city. Uh, while we try to, as Councilmember Lebo is uh, adamant about, is is it, we shouldn't be car focused everywhere. I think we might be able to find very specific spots within our community to really be pedestrian and multimodal modal focused, and really put cars as uh, the secondary element that's on those streets. So that would be smaller neighborhood streets uh, where kids can then play in the streets. It could also possibly be utilized as a tool to um, control cut through traffic. So I think there's kind of a two pronged benefit to those types of environments. Um, so I don't have a specific thought, uh, but I know uh, Councilmember Frenchie and I have chatted about this could look like. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's so much as a proviso item, uh, but there is this minor cost involved with it and a policy that would need to be in place. Yes, and, and Councilor Member Goldman as well has, has yes. we've had this conversation as well. Mr. Goldman, and then I have a thought. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, Council Members Riddle, French, and I were all part of that conversation. Um, I had sort of envisioned that this could be part of the Safe Streets, uh, the either Street Improvement Fund or Safe Street Early Investment Fund. Um, but we had we had floated the idea of maybe doing a pilot study in a few locations around the city of just, hey, let's close this street uh, in much the same way that the city of Seattle does. But I, I sort of assumed that the funding would be available without the need for a further proviso, but I'm, I'm open to feedback about that. 
you, you beat me to it, Councilmember Goldman. That's exactly what I was thinking. I, I believe um, I, this is one that needs to be, we're going to have to have some professional input on this topic from, from um, our tra transportation engineering company to, to and we will, um, at, at, a, at a point here, and I wouldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't be too long into the future, we'll have um, some ideas from them about what the expenditures will be in terms of a, a plan for sort of holistically to get through some of these things, the, the, the um, speed limits, the variety of different topics we've talked about in terms of stages. Councilmember Bodhi? Yes, coming at it from a completely different direction. In the early stages of the Parks Board, because it is the park and, Parks and Recreation uh, Board, uh, thinking about recreation and and the the Seattle street closures during the pandemic, they actually were thinking for a while. But you know, it's a small group, and someone has to take the lead basically to kind of make something happen. They were thinking about you know uh, offering to the community. Does are there are there streets or blocks or collections of blocks? where people would like to, in the summer, do weekend closures or a Sunday closure. Something that is that enhances walkability, but it's kind of a recreation activity and it's not permanent. So that they they just ended up dropping that, um, that thought because there wasn't really a champion, someone who was going to do work on it. Um, but but they were interested in it. And but the the thought was that the neighborhood would want you would want the neighborhood to kind of ask for it uh you know so or or most of the neighbors to agree to it or something how would that work but uh uh so so but it was from the point of view of, of doing it on weekends in the summer um from a recreation point of view and you know kind of almost make your street like a street party you know so <laughs> Indeed, I think the programs have been very successful in many communities. Mr. Furtani. And since this was sort of a surprise uh, item, I, I guess I'll add on to it. I'm, I'm in favor of this. And uh, um, one of the other ideas, uh, of course, has always been turning uh, Perkins Way into a one-way street and so reserving about half of its width for pedestrian uh, bikes. And, uh, um, you know, you're right. The neighborhood buy-in is important. But the, the way you get the neighborhood buy-in is people are aware of these ideas floating around. And, uh, you know, everybody you talk to about some of these ideas, I say, that's a great idea, like they've never heard it before. Mm -hmm. So, so the question is, how do you get the word out there so that people can start doing the buy-in? And um, you know, it's through our committees, it's through us going out there into the community and talking about it through the newsletter. But I'm wondering if there's a better venue by which we can actually inform people of some of these ideas that are floating around. Thank you. I, I think my suggestion is that we have this as part of a policy discussion coming up. I do believe, to Councilmember Golden's point, that within the Three or four hundred thousand dollars that we're talking about here, that there would be enough to get, to get us there. My my caution is about a healthy streets program, and in reading about them, we have to know what the uh, the concerns are for emergency vehicle access. We have to have we we need to know those those uh, vagaries. We also need to know what the best practices are to make sure that somebody doesn't come crash through the barrier and run over um, one of us. Um, and you know. One of us will still have a quorum, so I guess it's okay. But uh, more than that, it might not be good. I, I think that um, I think we. Uh, so that's m my thinking. Uh, unless some somebody, uh, you all have strong feelings about putting proviso on here, but I think it's going to be sort of part of this this these incremental uh, steps that we're we're considering. And then I'm hoping that as part of these this early study that's going to have to be done um, to, to consider our speed limits, that we can include this as, a, as some of those smaller things, a very, very discrete set of things. To be honest with you, I don't know exactly what those are. So without knowing them, I don't know. I'm not sure which direction we should go. Um, Proviso, no proviso. Consequences. You also have to be careful not to have unintended consequences. So you shut down Perkins to only one lane of traffic and 178th goes crazy, you know. So I, I do think these things, I like the idea of temporary, um, you know, with, with uh, and, and then 
things could grow incrementally from there, depending on how some of the temporary efforts go, you know, because the, the thought would be uh, you would either close all weekend or one whole day. It wouldn't be just for a couple of hours for a street party or something. So anyway. Yeah. And I, I think on your on point, your comment about unintended consequences is also part of what we need to get experts to weigh in on. Councilman Riddle. Yeah, I think I think one thing that I see with this uh, pilot program, I think would be great. It will get the word. And so, and we're back. <laughs> yes, I paused for us. Um, and then I think the other piece um, is the permanent or semi-permanent versus like, you know, just on a weekend or a weekday. I think one thing about it being more established is it's going to change behaviors in those areas more than you don't know if you're going to be going into one of these zones or not. You know, you're going into that zone, you're going to kind of be prepared and slow down. So I kind of prefer that. But I think what uh, Council Member Goldman uh, suggested as a pilot program, I think that would be a fantastic place to start. Uh, and then a uh, next step would be looking at how do we fund a full program if it's successful. Thank you. And just as a reminder, Council Member Lebo has mentioned in here in his, some of his items about Perkins. We've discussed that a number of times. It's been talked about for decades. And, and I, there is a question of two. It really some of these measures need to be really uh, 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 requested and vetted by the by the neighbors to make sure that we're not um, being fanciful and, and um, getting out over our skis, so to speak. And Chair, just as an aside, um, yeah. I did approach the chief and he thinks he has some data that we could start from of requests for traffic calming that were not right, didn't rise to the level of our uh, traditional traffic calming method. So I think we have some data that we can start from if there's an interest in a pilot program. Excellent. I think that's great. Okay. Well, uh, if you're amenable, let's let's put this into the policy, into a policy discussion going forward. I believe there's enough funding in the mix for us to certainly do a pilot program and to, um, you know, get some additional information that we need from the experts on, on the, in the mix. I will do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. So we are on to um, Councilman Lebo had some other things here. Was this in the proviso zone? Yep. Okay. So we have we've covered the master planning street overlays. Um, we'll agree, uh, you know, the administration will, yeah. So we will. I think we have an understanding with the administration relative to this. Um, and uh, I was making sure I'm not missing something here, Mr. Lebo. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about in item number one? No. Okay. Um, and let's, some of these other ones, let's go, let's develop a plan to approve the existing stairs to Northeast, Northeast Bothaway from 160th. That's come up a number of times in the past about the the, the, the sorry condition of those stairs, um, overgrown and broken and challenging. The question is um, whether that's a, something that we need to have a conversation about as, as a group, um, since we haven't touched on that before. Is anyone aware, are, are you all aware of the situation now? Uh, I am, but I thought there was a question of who's own, who owns it and who's responsible, and it wasn't clear. It's part of the right-of-way. It is? Okay. Yeah, it's the 160th undeveloped right-of-way up from the top. Okay. There's also a question there, too, of some encroachments that makes it a little awkward, too, right. you know, so it, it is what it is. Um, so I think it's, yeah, Mr. Lima. So I just offered a number of locations. So that as we think about um, streets, that we also think about sidewalks and stairs. And just, um, I don't know that we need to make it as a proviso that they have to do this, but rather to bring the attention that it should be part of our plans to address how we make our stairs and sidewalks safe, not just our roads. So I don't know that this needs to go into the budget other than just to make the uh, administration. Mm -hmm. administration aware. Okay. There is though one on numbers, um, my number six, which is develop a plan for safe pedestrian path stair from 40th Avenue Northeast to the Berg Gilman Trail. There's a very sharp 
and steep uh, hairpin Hairy. at that location. Okay. And that is a, um, a significant access to the Burt Gilman Trail, but is one that is not, um, how shall I say, could be improved for pedestrian use in a significant way. Fair enough. Uh, and, and just on point, I was on the phone with Councilmember Goldman uh, and was running, trying to run up that hairpin one day when I was on the phone with him. We had to stop the call because or pause because I couldn't breathe. Um, it's also it's pretty checkers. Yeah. So. so I think um, just so everybody's aware of it for the record. Mr. Lebo has developed a plan to improve the existing chair of Northeast Bottle Bottle Way in Northeast on 60th Street. Chair, your there. microphone isn't on and it's hard to hear you, sir. Sorry. Yeah. It's me. Next. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. Now we're good. Now we're good. Uh, develop a plan to improve existing stairs to Northeast Bothell Way from Northeast 160th Street. And actually that undeveloped right of way continue, continues on the other side of the road down through the lower part of Sheridan Beach. It's just not developed. Um, uh, develop a plan to improve the existing stairs between Northeast 165th and 38th Avenue Northeast. The down the hill. Down the hill. Down okay. Yeah. Um, Maybe okay. That, maybe that's the one that they don't know who, who has the right of right of ownership. Okay. Develop a plan for a safe pedestrian path from Northeast Bothway along 38th Avenue to 157th. Understandably, that's challenging. I had to drop a friend's car off at suburb service and walk back, and I chose poorly. <laughs> <laughs> I chose poorly there. Um Develop a plan for safe pedestrian paths to stair from 40th Northeast to the Burke Gilman Trail. I actually, Mr. Lebo, when you sent this to me, I had to look up a map and I thought 40th, I was thinking over here. <laughs> well, that's a very, don't we have a sidewalk? And, and then I like, wait a minute, where's 40th? And I had to go all the way down to the southern end of the city. So just for the record, it's down there right above the Burke. It's a really sharp hairpin turn. Uh, kind of below Mr. Goldman's uh, house. Um, <laughs> It, it's how I would access the Burke Gilman. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. So I think we, um, Director Perigo see, hears us and the administration hears us. And I think these are things too that we need to continue to have and highlight in, in uh, uh, when we consider multimodal access and, 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 um, uh, and capital improvements as well for safety. So thank you for bringing those up. Uh, number six, paint pickleball lines on the tennis court at Horizon View Park and at LP Lake Forest Park Elementary School tennis courts. Apparently, I, my understanding this is already funding, funded yes, yes. for, or Horizon View Park, excuse Horizon me. View is yeah. funded. Horizon View is funded. Yeah. And the administration, as I understand it, is working with LFP Elementary. Is that correct, Mr. Perigo, that you're working with? You're, you've reached out to LFP Elementary? Yes, for <laughs> Yes, we're currently in discussion with the, with those folks to um, see what what um, their thoughts were on that. Also, okay, but okay, Can I just add? please. Our pickleball fan <laughs> on the uh, Parks and Recreation Board has successfully raised funds from the larger pickleball community for nets. You know, some they're they're movable but heavy duty pickleball nets for Horizon View. Uh, so that is um, something that she took on as a responsibility and didn't want to, you know, try to get money from the city for. So she successfully raised, I think it was five thousand dollars, Jeff, something like that. So just a bit of a plug for the board, but also that. Um, there are other sources of funding, like you know, crowdsourcing of funding. Uh, okay, uh, we've already talked about Perkins Way, and we've also talked about developing plan for the sewer master plan and surface water water master plan, um, so that the administration, if they do not fill the PM position, that will, they will look for outside support within that next. Um, hey, colleagues, did I miss anything on? The provisos slash uh, amendments to the budget. Uh, yes, and um, are you talking about the original one for the planet uh, cl climate? Yes, my understanding is the administration is aware of that, and they will be adding that into the mix. 
Uh, just to provide a little bit of data, um, we talked to that. Yeah, we, we we talked to the city of Kenmore, and they spent somewhere between sixty and a hundred thousand on their plan, which to, uh, took over uh, two years to develop. Uh, talked to the city of Shoreline; they t uh, they spent uh, ninety thousand dollars with a contract with Cascadia Consulting, and so um, there's a lot of costs that are associated. Of course, those are much larger cities, but there are some fixed costs that we're going to run into. And given that we're trying to do an ambitious timeline. We'll We'll have this done by the end of the biennium it means that uh, um, there will be more costs in the second year than there will be in the first year. So that's the reason. My understanding is you're, you're looking for the additional 5,000, correct? Yes. And so I got out over my skis with Mr. Hill because I didn't say the amount. <laughs> he, he gave me a sharp look because uh, maybe it was half a million dollars or something, but no, 5,000. So we're, we're all on the same page here. Okay. All right, everybody. We're at the bottom of the hour. Um, it is time to talk about levers. Um, director. Chair? Yes. Is there is there time for, for me to inject one idea? Um, I had uh, the livable cities uh, uh, co-director come and present to council uh, for the, the prior council makeup. And I think there was a lot of interest on council of how we could partner through them with students at the University of Washington. Um, it would be a program that we could develop with them. So it's quite a bit of a gray area, um, but thinking about the climate action plan, thinking about looking at, you know, these pri uh, pedestrian priority streets and, and how they may all kind of interweave in many ways. Um, I would like to keep that topic in the front of our mind as a way to perhaps leverage the funds we have to a greater um, amount of actual work being produced. Um, teams there do GIS, business, there's all sorts of different ways that we can connect with them. So just kind of put a little plug in there. Let's things start firming up. We start thinking about these plans. Um, that may be uh, an opportunity for us to get some really interesting expertise, some student involvement, um, and do something great for our greater community at the same time they do something good for us. Uh, costs are relatively minimal, um, probably I'm under 15,000. So uh, just something for us to think about. I don't have it as a specific proviso right now because I don't really quite know what's gonna come out of all these um, desires for plans, but it's something that I wanted to remind us is available. Well, thank you, council member. And um, I don't think, you know, Director Perigo was not here when we had this conversation. Of course, Director Bennett, uh, Mr. Bennett was was here, so he's aware of the program. I don't know whether you two can connect on that because there may be, yes. Sorry, I have been speaking to the um, two individuals that run the Livable Cities program. We're trying to identify projects. We shot a few over to them. Um, one stuck, which would be the plan, master planning for the um, Lakefront Park. Obviously, we would hire a consultant, but they would like to be a part of that. Um, they didn't feel there was a lot of traction for them on you know, helping out the Climate Action Committee. They, so I'm, I met in our leadership meeting this last week. I gave everybody the task of what items do you have coming up in the next biennium that you know you think you know you've got a Mr. Bennett with the um, comp plan update things like that so we're trying to identify some projects because they really want more of a package they don't want to do one-offs they'd like to have a, a longer term um, relationship with the city so we're working on that right now excellent that's that's great I know that Mr. Furtani is disappointed that the Climate Action Committee doesn't <laughs> get the, into the mix, but that was a really interesting presentation. If, if some of you haven't seen it, it you can look it, up, look it up on video. Thank you for bringing it Thank up. You. Uh, okay, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour, so we're looking at levers, and um, I'm going to talk about the, the, uh, the various methods that we have for considering increasing revenues. And um, first of all, let's start with, uh, and Director Vaughn, did we want to put a slide up? We talked about that briefly. I don't want to put you on the spot if it's not available, but, um, it, but I'm going to do it, it anyway. <laughs> you're not putting me on the spot. Thank we you. did plan to put it up just as a reference. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to give 
our city clerk a minute to throw that up on the screen. And it should be a familiar slide that was from Monday, our October 24th meeting um, for the new revenue lever options, the optional additional revenue increases. And that bought enough time for go. that to happen. Thank you very much, Director Vaughn. This is this is helpful. Uh, and yes, Vice Chair Castleberg. So um, I would like to make a suggestion here that we see if there's any objection to any one or more of the levers from any members of council. I myself don't have any objections to any of them, so I thought it might be useful to approach it from that viewpoint just to see whether um, there's concerns on any particular um, one of these. Colleagues, I was going to suggest we just start with the utility taxes, but but I holistically is fine with me. I think um, we start from the opposite end. Mr. Lebo. I don't think we're ready to do this. I think given our general fund uh, balance, that um, there are things that we can do within the budget that we've expended now that if we need to, we don't have to expend in the future. Uh, but I think it sends a wrong message to the citizens to be increasing taxes when we have such a large general fund uh, balance. And one can say that well, all you have to do is look to see that in a few years, we won't have that balance that we will have consumed it. Um, there are things that we can do before we get there. So I think we are being premature. Thank you, Mr. Lebo. Colleagues, other thoughts? Councilmember Member Bode. Uh, We've talked about this before and I've expressed my views before. Uh, because we do have a structural deficit and where some of the funds that are look like their extra funds are already committed. And also some of them are one time, uh, the result of one time funds, including the pandemic funds. So I think these are in total, we've looked at the dollar figures in total with our budget director. I think these are fairly modest. There are provisions for low income individuals to get, um, to get relief. And so I actually, think all of these uh, make sense and and I'll support all of these at this point. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Riddle. Yes, uh, you know, I think I think uh, Councilmember Lebo hit it on the head. There are things that we can do beforehand and we're looking at it. Um, this is what we can do. We can do our best to uh, offset that structural deficit. Uh, when you get to the point where it's a problem, there's very little you can do. Um, at that point, you're in over your head too deep. I think this is gonna keep us afloat for the time that we need and hopefully uh, enough time that the legislature can really look at how to resolve the structural deficit issue. But until then, I think this is, yes, this is this is the thing that we can do. And I, I support us doing it. Thank you, council member. Uh, Mr. Furtani. My two previous colleagues took my points, but I wholeheartedly agree with them. Um, these are the levers, as you say, that we can move at this point. And um, I always am um, concerned about the fact that we have these six-year projections as an effort to figure out what's going to be happening to us. And if we don't heed them and start nudging the asteroid before it gets really close, it's really gonna be a problem. So um, I, I'm very much in favor of these. Thank you, Councilmember Fertani. Councilmember Goldman. Um, yes, I'm also in favor and, and two things that help give me comfort. Um, one is when Director Vaughn had mentioned that a lot of our nearby cities are already doing these. And so these are not totally out of the ballpark ideas that these are standard solutions that other cities are coming up with. And also echoing others that if our structural deficit is approximately $1 million each year, then this is not going to solve that problem, but it'll it will at least make the slope shallow enough to buy us a few extra years to help come up with more permanent solutions. Thank you, Councilmember Goldman. Um, you know, my thinking about this, we've had the the utility taxes. Um, we increased the TBD a number of years ago. Um, we increased uh, we've, the sewer tax and the surface water utility tax increases have been on the table in the previous previous uh, budget discussions, and we've um, chosen not to 
to to go after them. They never wrote, really rose to something that was that was um, uh, agreed upon by the group. And I do not raise taxes lightly. I am very concerned about where uh, the world economy is going, the pressures, the financial constraints on this on this uh, city and municipalities. And the fact that we are so dependent on um, uh, one-time revenues to close our gaps and to um, and and on uh, our property taxes to to fund basic services in this community, I had a conversation with with someone uh, over the weekend who I respect very highly, and this individual indicated to me, well, you can always you can always, and I I don't mean this with any flippancy, you can always cut. Five or ten percent, and you can. There's, there's, you can, but at what cost to services and to staff and to our community? Um, you know, the mayor and I have been through that, and it's not a place I want to go again. I want to be in a place where we're intelligently thinking forward, um, as you say, and I love your analogy, uh, Councilmember Fratani. Uh, the, the, you know. And the asteroid is is uh, within a million miles of Earth. You're in deep trouble if it's a a planet killer. And the combination of our structural deficit and economic uh, considerations, particularly increased inflation, to hear that tech companies and a variety of large organizations throughout uh, the world, as well as the United States, are continuing to raise prices uh, and and seem to be able to do it with impunity without impacting their bottom line or without impacting their sales, I shouldn't say their bottom line, um, it will impact their bottom line, but uh, it concerns me. The unknown is, is out there. And by the time we're staring at the hole, it's too late. So I will be supporting these. I look forward to hearing what the public has to say. Uh, I think that's absolutely critical. And uh, as indicated by Vice Chair Castlever and some other folks, two things give me comfort. One is that there are programs for lower income households to participate in, uh, as well as um, the fact that other surrounding communities, many of them long ago have increased these taxes and some of them much higher than what we're considering here. And I think what it does say to me is that we have to have a commitment as a community and as a policymaking body to have a, a conversation about where we want to go as a community in terms of expenditures and revenues, because we cannot continue to um, uh, where we on the path we're on right now. And uh, it's the first time I've said that since about 2015 and um, before that, actually. And so I think this is a, a responsible move. Um, it's not one that we undertake lightly. I certainly do not. And it's really kind of a last resort, in my opinion. Um, to Mr. Lebo's point about general fund balances, we have a disagreement on that. And I, I certainly respect his opinion on it. And I think that it's uh, going to be an important conversation for us to have going forward to make sure that we don't have to continue to do sort of small incremental things to try to patch holes. Because uh, Mr. Goldman said, this is still not going to get us to where we need to be. And I know there's six year projections, but with the best available data we have right now, that's where we are. So, Councilmember Bodie. I'd like to address the idea that you can always cut five to 10%. You know, as someone who used to manage a $250 million budget, <laughs> you know, when you have a $250 million budget, you can always cut 5% or postpone or do things like that. But um, I actually think we're close to the bone. And the increased costs in terms of just keeping pace with staffing, not expanding our staff, but just keeping pace with um, staffing salaries, uh, the cost of materials to provide city services, the fact that we can see that we're uh, losing police officers to other communities. These are, it, you can't always just cut five to 10%. I think that, that uh, Staying the course is is very precarious right now for us because 
uh, staying the course is almost like a five to 10% cut with the current pressures or more with what we're seeing. So I do think that that makes sense in some contexts. I think in the context we find ourselves, that's uh, that's that's really not quite true. So I, I agree with you. And my my point was simply that it would it would impact services and, and level of services we'd be able to provide. And we could not cut five to ten percent in terms of um, I mean, there's a few nice to haves, but again, at what cost to the community? Do we stop maintaining parks? Do we stop, you know? So that exercise is a challenge. And um, I, I, I really, the other thing that I think is really important for us to all recognize, and we've had this conversation with the administration, Director Bond's given us some great information here, that the, the, the tax taxes that our community is paying from the standpoint of the real estate uh, uh, real estate taxes, property taxes is 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 quite low, um, and you um, and the percentage we get of the total remittance that they send in is, you know, I, I believe it may be at an all time low actually in terms of the percentage of what we send to the county and that what comes back. So that's another point. But again, not to belabor the point, we can uh, we'll have the public hearing next week and um, uh, and we'll. Um, see what the public has to say at that at that time, but this at this time it sounds I'm hearing that the council is recommending with one dissenting uh, opinion that we move forward with the levers as a package. Is that correct, colleagues? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, any other thoughts before? Yeah. Taking that's time. that's yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're fine. Sorry. Thank you. I've forgotten before, so I appreciate the the the. Uh, no, no, no. You're totally. You're totally fine. I was just going to see if there's anything else. Um, as a reminder, the administration will be putting together the package of what we suggested. Uh, we have uh, some homework to do in terms of provisos to get those into their hands sooner rather than later is really important. Um, those those things in the mix. And um, Mr. Mr. Hill, what would you say in terms of provisos deadline? I actually should be asking Matt too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I no no no. Well, I mean, uh, the, nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can certainly provide you the provisos. We ultimately need them just when you adopt the final budget, so that we have that as an attachment to the package. Next week is just your public hearings. So you don't need them in advance of that, right? Public hearings, and so we we need to prepare ordinances um, based on your revenue levers discussion tonight so that they can be okay. part of the packet for next week. Your provisos, if you have them ready, we could get those to you as well. Um, we can send those in as an addendum to the packet, you know, Monday, Tuesday. Um, okay. But definitely have those attached to the final document as you adopt it on the 17th. Thank you. What I was thinking to, I just want to make sure there wasn't, wasn't an administrative um, you know, procedural deadline that, that I, we want to work with your schedule. Um, so colleagues, I think it would be really important for us to get them into the mix. They can add them to the packet on Monday. I personally would like the public to be able to weigh in on, you know, these things for, for the public hearing as well. So uh, unless anybody has other thoughts, let's say, um, you know, midday Monday, noon Monday, rather than end of day Monday, is that? Okay, is that amenable to everybody? Great, Matt, am I out of turn here? You... No. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get mine in tomorrow. That, I'm gonna enough. try to get mine in yeah, tomorrow. Fair, fair enough, that's right. <laughs> not looking at my list. Okay, with that, if there's nothing else uh, on topic, we are going to move on to public comment. Matt, do we have anybody? out there in the mix that would like to make public comment. Uh, if you want to address the council, please use the raise hand function. Doesn't look like it, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Matt, appreciate that. Well, with that, everybody, thank you for a great discussion. Looking forward to hearing what the public has to say next week and we're adjourned. Thank you. Have a good evening.